It is a beautiful fall afternoon at a soon-to-be-packed Tubby Raymond Field, the perfect setting to conclude the regular season with the annual Battle of the Blue. It's a top 10 matchup as Delaware plays host to Villanova. Brought to you by Bloom Energy, providing resilient, sustainable power to businesses across the U.S. and globally. We have played weeks and weeks of football and settled nothing in the CAA so far this year. A four-way tie atop the conference, including the two teams on the field below us. So there is a lot to settle on this Saturday afternoon. Thank you so much for being with us live atop the tub. I'm Andrew Bogus. This is former UDQB Pat Devlin. And Pat, this game always means a lot, but with that four-way tie atop the CAA, so much more on the line today. Absolutely. This rivalry dates all the way back to 1895, but when talking with both coaches today, they basically said, who cares about the rivalry? It's all about the CAA title and possibly getting a bye week going into the playoffs. Delaware QB Ryan O'Connor has ushered the Blue Hens through this eight-win season, leaving them in position today to win the conference crown. Absolutely. Ryan O'Connor, new as a starter when you come into this season, but he's really done a great job. 17 touchdowns on the season, only six interceptions. He pushes the ball way down the field, but he also manages to take care of it. And he's just a really good leader of this offense. It is his first taste of this rivalry, but Villanova QB Connor Watkins scored the winning points for his school a year ago. Absolutely. And Connor Watkins can do it in so many different ways. He's such a dynamic player for this Villanova offense. 17 passing touchdowns, eight rushing touchdowns. He rushes it a ton in the red zone and is able to score a lot of points for this Villanova offense. Multiple trophies can be won this afternoon. Delaware, Villanova kickoff is next from Newark. Welcome back to W. Raymond Field. Andrew Bogish and Pat Devlin with you. The coin toss just completed on the field before so much is figured out on this final Saturday inside the CAA. The Battle of the Blue always is so substantial to these two programs, but they've got their sights on the second prize here today, sharing the conference title and earning its automatic bid into the FCS bracket. The Blue Hens have had the shorter end of the stick in this head-to-head -head for the last decade plus. They want to change that history today and take hold of their destiny and get a leisurely Thanksgiving, if we're being honest. Because a win today probably secures them a bye through next weekend into the following weekend. So they've got their attention in multiple places, but also focused straight across the field. This is the... Pick your word to describe six different, these are just tiebreakers. Now there is a way where simply this game decides the conference championship and the automatic bid, but there's also these six possible tiebreakers. The left-hand column is who wins today leads to the right-hand side getting in. And those three marked games, the tiebreaker to settle the auto bid 
is based in those three scenarios, the first two and the last one on point differential. So those things will change during the game as well. We will do our best to walk you through all of this. The other games of note involve Richmond and Albany. The Spiders are at William & Mary. U Albany is hosting Monmouth. Both those games about to kick off as well. So sit back, enjoy it, and three-ish hours from now, we might know who has the CAA's automatic bid in the postseason. The good news, Pat, for both of these schools down below us, they're going to the playoff one form or the other. What they're deciding today for them specifically is if they play next weekend and where they play next right. weekend. Yeah, it was funny. We asked both coaches if they were going to have someone down on the field who was, you know, looking at the standings in real time and reporting back to them. But for them, I think it's really about just winning this game, and that's all that matters for each of these teams. For you, out, you Albany, maybe they have someone on their on their sideline. Today's Delaware football uniform report is sponsored by Delaware Hair and Company, a proud supporter of the Blue Hens. Look good, play good. The traditional blue jersey and gold pants for the Blue Hens. And Villanova, white on top, white blue on the bottom. The Wildcats won the toss, elected to defer, so Nate Reed has it teed up for Delaware, and the Battle of the Blue is underway with a touchback. So the ball blew off the tee twice already, right? And so if we look up at that American flag, it is ripping here as far as the wind goes. And so we'll see if uh, you know one team has the wind at their back or the other and see how that impacts the passing game today. As Connor Watkins leads Villanova onto the field here in just a second, checking the flags, they'll be playing into the wind. You want to be going at the moment left to right to have the wind at your back. Villanova will go into the wind as Connor Watkins gets under center. He is finishing strong in his second year as Nova's starting QB. Over 2,000 yards passing for the season, 17 touchdowns throwing, eight more running. Jalen Jackson's with him in the backfield, and it's Jackson with some space straight ahead, and then bouncing to the outside. Jalen Jackson down the far sideline. Finally, he's out of bounds at the Blue Hen 20. Great job there by Jalen Jackson, just kind of navigating his way through the line of scrimmage, and then you saw that big hole open up. He's able to bounce it to the outside and get a big explosive play for this Villanova offense. That's exactly what they wanted to start things off, right? A great explosive play in the run game to be able to set up the rest of their offense. We talked a little bit about it in the open, but Jalen does a great job running the ball. And then Connor also, when you get down to this red zone area, he can also run it as well. 55 yards on the run, the 59th play of over 20 yards this season for Villanova. Now a shot in the end zone. And there's the flag. The intended receiver was Jalen Sanchez. And the tight coverage on the far sideline. Yeah, that ball looked like it was way inside. I'm not sure if they're going to talk about a hold or if that ball was actually catchable. And pass interference is the call on Khalil Dawsey, who had the two picks. One, he brought back 100-plus yards for points a week ago at Campbell. But in two plays, Villanova goes from its own 25 to the five yard line. Yeah, well, you could see there was definitely some contact there, but that ball was so far inside. And again, we'll see if that's the wind making an impact on that throw. But that, that throw was way inside. I'm not sure that uh, the UD, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Villanova offensive player could get to it. It is first and goal from the five after the penalty. D. Will Barley is the running back this time for Villanova. And it is Barley, and it's a Wildcat touchdown in just 53 seconds. Absolutely. Great job there. Just identifying, you know, no, no one to really take that edge right there, and Villanova runs it right around the outside, and easy, easy walk-in touchdown. Three plays, 75 yards in the 53 seconds. Jackson's big run set it up, and the other running back, Barley, finishes it off. Yeah, we talk about, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but the uh, the uh, running running game here for Villanova, they don't do it with just one guy. There's three guys in that room and possibly four that can make an impact today, and a couple of them have already done that so far. They run for almost 223 yards per game. The PAT is through from Matthew Mercurio, and what a start on the road for Villanova. They have dominated this head-to-head, -head, and they're on the board in less than a minute in Newark.
in less than a minute. The scoreboard changes as Villanova drives 75 yards, gets into the end zone. A perfect start on the road for these Wildcats who continue or hope to continue their dominance of the Blue Hens here this afternoon. We can almost show you the entire drive here. Three plays beginning with a huge rip of a run from Jalen Jackson. Yeah, Jalen Jackson with a great run here, but we talked with Coach Ferrante about the offensive line, and they just have so much experience on that offensive line. Last year, they really didn't have a ton of continuity. There were guys who were injured throughout the year, but this year there has been a lot of continuity, and it pays off right here with the great run by Jalen Jackson. Doing a great job finishing the run as well, not, not going out of bounds. He's going to finish it right there. Then you have the pass interference here, which moved the ball from the 20 up to the 5. And then a nice easy walk in touchdown here for DeWill Barley. And we saw the PI call again during the break, and you still think that ball being so far inside should have kept the flag in the pocket. Yeah, right? I think it should have kept the flag in the pocket there. It was, that was pretty far inside. It's one of those things that you hope the, the referees get together and kind of talk about it and uh, maybe sort it out later in the game. Which is surprising to me because I thought as a quarterback, everything is pass <laughs> interference. I didn't know you guys were allowed to argue against it. Right, right. Nathan Fondacaro, who punts for Villanova, also kicks off. And now I think he's going to do his first reset with the ball being blown off the tee. Sun is out, which is helping. Earlier in the morning without the sun, it was cold-ish here in Newark. But the wind is definitely going to be a factor throughout the afternoon. And kicking into the wind, high and short, fair caught by Delaware, which gets its first possession in an immediate seven-point hole. Yeah, and JoJo Bermuda, as you can see, is a little frustrated with himself. He's such a good return man. I think he was hoping to probably take that and get some yards there. But uh, again, something they can adjust with. The opening kickoff we saw went out of the end zone. The next kickoff ended up right at the round of 20. And Ryan Cardi, creative out of the shoot because Ryan O'Connor, as you can see, is lining up top of your screen in just a second as a wide receiver. He's going to get this from Zach Marker and throwing it back to Marker now, who's got blockers near side. Marker's still on his feet and safely out of bounds in Villanova territory. That's what you get with this UD offense. A lot of creativity on the play calls. And, you know, if you have a bunch of, of talent that you can throw out there, even if it's two quarterbacks, it's, uh, it's great to just use that creativity and, and get your guys with athleticism out in space. Marker has been QB2 for most of the year, wasn't healthy recently. We think he was technically available a weekend ago against Campbell, never got on the field, and he's out there for play number one today. Yeah, amazing. And, and Delaware, they just have a history of doing this in games. There's a couple games this year where first or second play from scrimmage just really, really some amazing, big, explosive plays, and today's no different. There is an injured Delaware player behind the play. There's a wall of offensive linemen prepping to block Marker. And that is Bradley Onyewu, who is, I think it's his left leg is the issue. And is going to try to get to his feet right now, and you can see it is the left leg. Right guard, grad student from Dover, Delaware, putting no weight on his left leg as he gets to the near sideline. Yeah, this, this offensive line for UD was one that really wasn't talked about too much last year, but they're just, they're, they've really done a great job this year in the run game and the pass. Big and experienced, blocking for an offense that scores the ninth most points in FCS at just under 35 a game. Marcus Yarns has not been at full strength as of recently, but we expect him to be a full go this afternoon. That's him motioning out of the backfield on first and 10. And it's Yarns coming back to his left, stumbling his way near the 25 yard line. Back to back plays move the chains for UD. And now we'll check Villanova's starting defense. Jake Reichwein, the Holy Cross transfer, having a nice debut season on the main line for Villanova. Three linebackers in most scenarios for the Wildcats, and all three of them talented. Yarn straight ahead this time for a couple. And then on the back end for Villanova, like Delaware, multiple safeties, three or four at a time. Not as crazy as five or six for the Blue Hens, but it's kind of the way defenses roll now, huh? There's as many defensive backs out there as possible with a couple of guys who can play 
kind of safety linebacker hybrid. Right, they call them safeties, but some of them just play up at the line of scrimmage, and I think you'll see a little bit of that today with these Villanova safeties who are really physical. Second and nine of the Nova 24, designed run. That's Marker again, and he stumbles back at the original line of scrimmage. He was almost too fast for his own good there. Yeah, Turf Monster got him there. We'll see if he stays in, if they have a little package for him to keep going. But going back to this Villanova defense, their two corners, Devin Marshall and Ice Waxter, they just do a really good job. They're physical, they're tough, they like to get up and press and play man coverage. And it's something that Delaware probably hasn't seen a lot of. And if they have seen it, these guys are the best in the conference at doing it. So it'll be a challenge for this talented UD wide receiving court today. It remains marker at QB. It's third and 10. And the screen pass is eaten up. That's Reichwein face to face with Marker. Knocks it straight down and a promising Delaware drive dies here. Great pressure by Jake Reichwein there. Obviously trying to set up that screen and he was just able to beat his man and get in the backfield pretty early. And, and that's a guy who leads the team in impact plays. He's not necessarily the leading tackler, but he's got eight and a half tackles for loss, four sacks, and then he does things like that, getting his hands up and disturbing the quarterback and making a great play. And now a 42-yard attempt would be a season-long wind at the back, and that one had the distance, but it's wide right. Nate Reed misses it, and it's an empty trip altogether for Delaware. Yeah, you like how the Delaware offense responded there with that big explosive play on the on the first drive, on the first uh, play from scrimmage. But then they have the, the play where Marker trips and he's not able to get it to a third manageable. And then they have the knockdown on the third down. And so I think that's one of those plays where uh, Coach Cardi talks about on third down. If they get a couple yards, they'll go for it on fourth down. But in that situation, you don't get any yards and you have to make that kick. Coach was talking to us during the week about conversion rate, right. not just right. third down or fourth down. It combines the two because, as you pointed out, if you miss on third down but get it on fourth down, you did end up converting. So this kind of tweaks numbers a little bit to give you a truer sense of how you're doing picking up first downs. And I think he said they were at 52%. But on that drive, they stall out. Then they miss the field goal. Back on defense, they rally to the football. Absolutely, and that's what Delaware's going to need to do to win this game, right? You saw in the first drive, they weren't able to stop this Villanova talented run game, but they need to stop the run game explosives, and they really need to watch what Watkins does in the red zone in order to be successful against this, this Villanova offense. And then these wide receivers, they have so many explosive plays. Rajon Pringle, he can, he just, he's always open, right? And, and they're gonna try to get the ball to him as much as possible. So they need to have their safeties playing deep to make sure they don't let him uh, get out. D. Will Barley the cutback. D. Will Barley the first down across the 40. Again, great blocking by this offensive line. It's just putting one UD defender in space. And you're going to see he makes this one man miss. That was Jackson Taylor in the hole that could not make the open field stop. Jackson Taylor, he's one of their leading tacklers, and you know D. Will was able to make him look a little bit silly in the open field there. Running backs flanking Watkins on first and ten from their own 42. They went three plays, 75 yards for a touchdown on their opening possession. Little dump off here. This is Ayo Durajaye, and by his ankles, Keno Arrington takes him out of bounds. Again, they have so many guys in this running back room that can do a lot of things. You fake it to one, you have a little screen pass out to the side for the other. Good creative football by this Villanova offense. TD, Ayo Durajaye, and Barley in their fifth year in the program. It's year six for Jalen Jackson, so just not three guys. Right but it's three old men, and two of them, Jackson and Barley, are over 2,000 yards rushing for their careers. It's Jackson this time, looking for a hole, steps through a tackle, he's out of bounds with a Nova first down. Yeah, and so when you have all that experience in your backfield, it makes it easier on the quarterback, right? Quarterback probably doesn't have to worry as much about all these safeties that Delaware has on defense. You know, all the things that they do, these running backs have seen it, and Watkins probably has a lot of confidence in this running back room to be able to pick up any blitzes that he throws at him. And Barley and Jackson are kind of similar. Ayo Durajaye is a weapon out of the backfield more than the other two. So there is some versatility there, but Jackson and Barley are similar looks for this Delaware defense. 
Watkins pulls it back to the far sideline. First catch of the afternoon is loose or not. Pringle stepped out of bounds before that was punched free. It's a catch, it's 12 yards, it's a Nova first down. So this is one of the things we're gonna have to watch with this Nova offense. I have 19 fumbles on the year and eight of those turned into actual turnovers. Looks like I can't really see where his feet are, but great job by Nick Ware going after that football. Maybe he saw that it was, it was there and he, he really tried to attack it as they got out of bounds. And we're gonna get a stoppage here and I get an early window to tell you that that far sideline is the difficult one for the replay crew. Does Pringle step out before Ware punches it free? And that's very close, and now... I think that right foot was still in bounds. Yeah, so the... But the problem, I think, Pat, is... You need to have a clear recovery. And I don't know if anybody did, yep. because the official came from downfield, waving his arms, blowing his whistle. Right. There was a defender and another Villanova wideout, and I don't think either one of them went to the football. Looks like that right foot is in when that ball gets loose. And to your point, here's the folks. Yeah, that I think that's going to be a fumble, but then recovered by nobody. So Nova's going to keep it where they have it right now. Absolutely. So Manny, this is going to drive Manny Rojas crazy because if you've ever seen a, a practice, the defensive side of the ball is always just fanatical about going and picking up the ball and you know bringing it back to the line of scrimmage because anytime that ball is on the ground, it's so important to grab it just for this reason. You just never know when you are going to, to have a, a challenge and be able to make a recovery. And the other part of it is, you know, you want to say, tell the officials to just not blow Let the whistle, play. Let it play. but you also want them to make a call. Yeah. And he thought he was making a call. And sometimes, you know, if you let that go, then you've got guys diving on each other, things can happen. Yeah, I, that foot seems that foot's in inbounds. and the ball is out, but we've got to let it roll and make sure that nobody actually picks it up. It looks like the left foot is still up in the air. And so I think he's he'll be inbounds here, but again, it's about the recovery. The, the whistle being blown wouldn't matter if somebody recovered it, right. but I don't think anyone went and picked it up because the call was so emphatic that the play was over. And if it stays as is, it'll be a Villanova ball where they currently have it. But here's the conversation between our official. That's Jeremy D'Angelo. He's in charge today. They've confirmed the call. So I guess they see that right foot as out. So play is dead there. Villanova keeps it. And for them, they hope to keep moving here for more points, already up 7 nothing. Yeah, fresh set of downs. You see how they do it. They really haven't taken any deep shots in the passing game yet. That was just a nice underneath throw. Get it to Pringle. Let him get you a first down. Crowd is booing here at the tub. Durajaye went straight ahead inside the 30. Good efficient run on first down. I think Villanova will take that all day if you get four yards, four or five yards on first down. But again, it's kind of just their mentality, right? They want to be balanced on offense. They want to get that going. For, for UD, how long are they going to sit in this type of defense and say, you know, we'll, we'll give them four or five yards a game because they know they have so many deep weapons on, on the outside. Yeah, it, it, they can lull you to sleep right. on offense, and all of a sudden, boom, Pringle in particular is free down the field into the end zone. Yep, and you've seen, they, they line him up all over the field. He was number three last time, now he's all the way on the outside. It's another run, though, and it's close to another Villanova first down, and they're going to move the chains again near the 20. So we'll keep an eye on these safeties as we move through the game, but as, as Villanova continues to slowly move the ball down the field in the run game, you know, just see if those safeties start to creep up, creep up, creep up. And now you're at a position, you're right outside of the 20. This is the portion of the field where you can really start thinking touchdown to check down in the pass game. Four wide receivers in this set for Villanova. With Ayo Durajaye still with Watkins in the backfield. It's another carry for number one. Turns the corner down the sideline. He stays in, and he's in the end zone. Two possessions, two Nova touchdowns, I think. Yeah, it looked like Tyron Herring's 
headgear came off, and I wonder, I see a flag on the field. I wonder if they got hands to the face. Herring's helmet was back near the numbers. He was at the sideline trying to get to the football. You see the flag. No, it is against Nova. So Nova's done it a couple different ways. I think we'll see the penalty here. See, so he got the hand up. Yep, ripped the helmet off. Good call by the referee there. But I think Villanova's really seeing something with this outside zone run play. Delaware's going to have to be really conscious of making sure that they're keeping their contain and, and they're keeping these, these really talented backs, um, you know, within, within the tackle box. Also might have been a hold in that sequence by Nick Torres, the Nova right guard. So they were doing everything they could in that far sideline. The penalty's officially on Sanchez for hands to the face. And now they'll mark off the 15 yards. Looks like it's from the, from the spot, so. Not, not a drive killer from a penalty perspective, but you never want to be behind the chains at first down. It's not a drive killer, but kicking into the wind, this is kind of on the outskirts of field goal range. They don't want to go any farther back from here and rob themselves of a the chance at points. Jalen Jackson back in, and Jalen Jackson's got nowhere to go. It's good gang tackling by this UD defense. You saw that time they did a much better job setting the edge and turning that running back inside to the rest of the defense, and they're able to get a stop here. Now, second and 18. They're looking to get about nine yards here on this play, but then you also have to remember this is Villanova, and they could go all the way to the end zone. Interesting, they don't move too fast, right? They're kind of, they're, they're not huddling, but they're at the line of scrimmage, they're taking their time. Play clock about to be at 10 for this second and 17 play. Watkins, Pringle on the slant, didn't catch it. And now it's third and long. A little RPO there. Connor Watkins is having a discussion with Pringle. I'm not sure that they were on the same page as far as the route that they were running. Now, now this puts them in a really tough position, right? Kind of not productive on your first and second down. Now you are in a third and 18, and if you're the quarterback, right, at the college level, there's not a coach talking to you saying, hey, we need X amount of yards to get the field goal. So hopefully that's one of the things from a preparation perspective that the coaches have been talking to Connor Watkins about. Watkins, a little swing pass for Jackson, and from behind, Chase McGowan gets him down. Great job, great chase down from Chase McGowan there on a really talented running back. 12 tackles for loss, now 13 tackles for loss, and he's just really a linchpin for this UD defense. Read it well, sheds that block, and then the big guy runs down the running back. Running him down, that's great. And because of maybe that wind exclusively on fourth and 19 from the UD 31, Instead of a 48-yard-ish field goal for Matthew Mercurio, Nova's going to go for it. Although Watkins has punted in the past, I don't think that they were trying to kind of pooch kick here, but that's always in play when he's out there. And with the play clock at one, he just gets that timeout call in. You can see there was a little bit of confusion with the wide receivers there. Everyone was kind of looking over to the, to the coaches to kind of figure out what was going on. We'll take the break with them. A fourth and forever for Nova. Already up 7-0 though in Newark.
back in Newark, and there's almost no empty seats in this beautiful facility for the annual Battle of the Blue matchup between Delaware and Villanova. Bragging rights on the line, the CAA crown, the automatic bid up for grabs as well. Villanova already leads seven nothing. Connor Watkins back on the field. It's fourth and 19 from the UD 31. Again, maybe Watkins, a little pooch punt here, but it seems like they're gonna run a play. Yeah, you can do a little quick kick here. I was thinking maybe try to draw them off sides, get an extra five. Is that enough to get your kicker to be able to, to attempt a field goal? Looks like not. Looks like they have a play drawn up. Watkins sets to throw. He can run. He's got some space. Throwing back middle of the field. And it is caught. Shy of the goal line, there were more Blue Hens than Wildcats there. But Daniel Lopes somehow make that catch. Unbelievable, that's one of those throws that you would say, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. Great job, kind of great pocket awareness here. Step up, but you're not gonna cross the line of scrimmage. He actually pointed at no one. And faked that make, defender to out. To make the defender back up, and then he throws it back across his body. And now an illegal uh, forward pass is called against Watkins. I was gonna want to get a second look on the replay. We only had that, the trail shot first. And that's a turnover on Downs because it was fourth down. It's a loss of Downs. The line of scrimmage was a 31. So there's the 31. Any part of your body. Oh, he is. That is very close. It's got to be his whole body. Yep. And that last foot. Didn't look like the back leg drug. Yeah, anything. and I believe you can review that. In fact, it was reviewed, I think, in last week's Delaware Campbell game. Yep. But no stoppage yet. That's Watkins looking up at the screen, <laughs> right. confused as well. And now we are going to be stopped again. No announcement yet that they're checking on this. As Jeremy D'Angelo comes together with Jonathan Forte as umpire. Oh, that would be smart too. So now we're lined up correctly. All right, so now this is the last drive we saw Ryan O'Connor as well as Zach Marker. Now Zach, Zach Marker's a guy who's played a couple of games here, started a few games, and Ryan O'Connor has been hurt, and he's really played fairly well. I think he needs to work on the deep ball a bit, but extremely athletic and great and quick game. Empty backfield, it's O'Connor slinging it. Jordan Towns in the catch. Yanked down right away by Daniel Abraham, one of those Nova linebackers. Now this was the plan kind of all year, O'Connor and Marker, but as you said, they weren't always simultaneously healthy. But as a former QB, I've got to ask you kind of the generic like rhythm question. When you're on and off the field like this, is it hard to kind of get your feet in the game? Yeah, I think it, it can be tough at times, but again, there's, there's ways to kind of keep yourself in it, and, and being able to turn around and hand the ball off to Marcus Yarns is, is a huge part of that. You don't just have to come in and throw it on third down, right? What I have always had an issue with is first and second down, you have the Wildcat guy. Right. And then now you bring him, bring him the starter and have him throw the ball on third down. Yarns through the hole, breaking tackles. Earlier in the season, Marcus Yarns, he wouldn't get touched until nine yards downfield. And, and I think we wanted to see a little bit of that today in order for Delaware to have some success. And that was it right there. I mean, great blocking by this offensive line. Yarns got nicked up in their Elon loss was in uniform, got one carry last week against Campbell. That game was 21-0 UD in a hurry, and it felt like they protected Yarns after that, realizing they kind of didn't necessarily need him right. to get to the finish line. We expect him to be, and so far so good, a full go today, but there is no Kyron Cumby today for UD. Yeah, but it's, it's great to have him full go because you've, you've seen it, they kind of moved him all around the field, motion him into the backfield, motion him out of the backfield, Line him up outside. O'Connor rolling. Townsend able to reach and catch. Going out of bounds. 
It's a good catch by Townsend. A better throw, though, and maybe he yeah. goes up the field for some more yards, right? Yeah, that's one of those where, where you're zone blocking to the left because the quarterback's rolling out to the right. And the running back had two guys to block here, and rightly so. He chooses the outside guy, but that leaves a free runner at Ryan O'Connor. He does a great job just drifting away and making that throw. But now you kind of set up this third and one, and this is one of those situations where Coach's playbook is wide open because you know he's going to go for it on, on four. O'Connor remains the quarterback. Chandler Harvin is in motion for UD. Inside handoff, Yarn stayed on his feet a couple of times. The third or fourth effort gets him closer to the marker, but short, and it's fourth down. Yeah, so I think they look to the sideline and they know immediately. But Marcus Yarn's here, you know, just free runner, nothing you can do, but does a great job breaking a one tackle to make sure it's not a huge loss and then almost makes it back to the line of scrimmage. It was Brendan Bell who blew that play up penetrating for Villanova. Yeah, that's what Brendan Bell does. Eight, eight and a half tackles for a loss and it sets up this fourth and two. They missed a field goal on their opening drive after giving up a quick Villanova touchdown. Again, they roll O'Connor, needs a receiver. It's an interception. It's Ice Waxter underneath Townsend to take it away. Yeah, we talked about these cornerbacks coming into the game, and they just are impact players right there. It was really locked down. UD tried to run quick game there, and you could see there was really just nothing open. So it's fourth and two. You have to try to make a play. Brian O'Connor throws an interception there, but it's not the end of the world. The blitz from Abraham, throwing on the run, short and behind Townsend, and Waxter gets the pick. Yeah, good pressure there by the Villanova defense. They always run these cross dogs, so they have the three down line, and then they like to add a fourth, but when they add a fifth, they like to bring that cross dog either on the right or the left guard side of the offense, and uh, you can see it got home there, and he wasn't ready to block it up. Second pick of the year for the senior from Newark, New Jersey, and that's now two drives for Delaware where they moved it fine, had a cross midfield, then things slow down, missed field goal, turnover. It's still 7-0 Villanova efforting for two yards is D. Will Barley. Yeah, and the, for the UD offense, that's kind of what they do. They really have they make their touchdowns by really long, explosive plays. And so for them to have a slow drive down the field, it's really just not what they do. So, you know, they, they've kind of been in a rhythm up until, you know, they've gotten to around that 30-yard line. So we'll keep an eye. Do they start to change the, the tactics a little bit and try to take some shots when they get down into that high red zone? This is also a team in Delaware that has been really good in the first quarter of the last month or so. Outscoring teams 88 to 7 over the last six first quarters. But two drives without points, down 7 nothing. That'll help their cause as Barley slips in the backfield, setting up third and long. Two runs in a row there from Villanova, and both times there's a good job by Delaware setting the edge on in both instances, turning that running back back inside. And that time, D. Will Barley really just got caught on his offensive lineman and lost his foot. It's third and eight for a team that converts 45% of their third downs coming into today. Time to throw for Watkins. Down the middle, it's Pringle. First down, Nova across the 45. Zone coverage there, Connor Watkins. Offensive line does a great job blocking it up. Connor Watkins has all day to survey the field. Starts out looking to his right, and you'll see Pringle come back to the left. Crossing, great job not running through the hole, right? Kind of tempoed himself there through the middle of the field. A, a nice on-point throw from Connor Watkins. Mateo Van Damia was the defender. That Pringle crossed to make the catch. And, and he was a, he's a linebacker, right? He's, right. Kind of that, he's that linebacker safety mix, and you could see he just kind of dropped a little bit too far past where that crosser was coming underneath. I'm also old enough to remember when he was a tight end <laughs> for, for UD. <laughs> Final 20 of the opening quarter, Watkins spikes it on his way down. There has not been a whistle or any signal, but clearly that was him throwing it down. This is not a fumble, but is it grounding? No, it really should be grounding. I didn't see, we can look at the replay, but I didn't see anyone in the, in the vicinity of that throw. It looked like he was trying to get rid of it, but like you said, he threw it right into the ground. And for that reason, I, I really think it's probably a pass, um, intentional grounding. Now you can see. Yeah, so you kind of had D. Will Barley standing off to the side a little bit there. But I, I think also we have to check where his knee was when he threw it. 
Jackson Taylor was the one on the back of Watkins. Jeremy D'Angelo just said this is an incomplete pass. But if his knee is down before that, then Delaware wants this to be a sack. It's the right knee or the left knee that's going down first. Like uh, that's close. Yeah, that was bang, bang. We are collecting debatable, replayable <laughs> calls in this first quarter. Now we apologize for Jeremy D'Angelo's mic not coming through for you to hear, but he just announced something. I think they gave him a sack. So they, okay, so the officials changed it up here, and it's a sack. Trying to evade that UD defender. You can see right here. Yeah, it looks like that knee is on the ground. So it ends up being a sack. And it ends up being the final play of the first quarter. Jackson Taylor makes that play as UD tries to slow Nova down. The Wildcats began this game with a three play, 75 yard touchdown drive. Delaware's missed a field goal and thrown a pick. So it's 7 0 Nova after one in Newark. Beautiful, beautiful day, beautiful stadium here in Newark, Delaware and Villanova playing the annual Battle of the Blue. The second quarter begins with the Delaware Football Injury Report sponsored by Christiana Care. Do your part, get your flu shot this season to help keep you, your family, and your community safe and healthy. Kim Wimberly has been out for a while. A lot of talented wide receivers for the Blue Hens, but they certainly have missed number 12. Yeah, absolutely. Whenever you miss someone like that who has all that experience, um, you just hope that he's hanging around that wide receiver room and continue to, to teach all the guys in that room and, and pass along all of his football knowledge. And today's late scratch in that offense as well is Cameron Cumbry, yeah, Kim, Kyron Cumbie being out, excuse me, as Connor Watkins looking for Sanchez can't connect. Absolutely. Great job there by Tyron Heron. Just playing really tough defense there and then getting his hand up at the last second. Again, Coach talked about how Connor Watkins, just so many throws have been on the money. And, and these, you know, quote unquote, 50-50 balls, when you're putting the ball on the money like that, you're forcing the guys on the other side of the field who also are on scholarship to make some plays. And Tyron Heron was able to do it that time. Third and 15 now for Nova on their side of the 50. They've got the wind at their back in this second quarter. Watkins to the near sideline. He overshoots Sanchez. It's fourth down. 
just an overshoot there by Connor Watkins. But again, putting yourself in that third and 15, you're not going to convert too many of them. But a good job by the UD defense, kind of stepping up there, getting a, getting a, forcing a punt here, and giving the ball back to UD. He needs to get something going on offense here. They've kind of just been slow in this first quarter. They've had the turnover on downs. They had the, the field goal attempt. But I know that they're looking to probably create some big explosives on this next drive. Nathan Fondacaro, the punter for Villanova. Averages just over 44 yards a kick. Backing up Townsend, a lot of hang time, and Jordan Townsend makes the fair catch at his own four yard line. So they'll need some explosive plays. 96 yards from the end zone for their first possession of quarter number two. Yeah, so I'm an offensive guy, so I don't necessarily know what all those motions are on the special teams, but right there, <laughs> I, the, UD, you know, they, they had a big motion, and then UD left Danny Abram, who was on our side of the field, just wide open, and, and they got to it late and covered it up late, but a little bit of confusion caused there by the movement on their special teams. So as this game begins, Albany and Richmond are tied with Delaware and Villanova atop the CAA. Any of the four that wins today earns a share of the conference crown. All the tiebreakers we showed you in quarter number one, that pass for Braden Rose dropped to begin this Delaware drive. The tiebreaking scenarios determine who gets the CAA's automatic spot in the FCS bracket. Now for Delaware and for Albany and for Villanova, they're in no matter what. They're playing for positioning, for seeding, for maybe a first round bye. Richmond, by all accounts, needs to earn the automatic spot to get into the postseason at all. And as you saw on the scoreboard just there, the two teams not here that are playing, Albany's got the lead, and Richmond battling William and Mary as Delaware's offense continues to battle this Villanova defense. They're yeah, going the wrong way here on these first two plays. Again, they kind of tried, tried up the middle, and they didn't, ended up with an RPO that was dropped by Braden Bros there. And that's one of those that it, it needs to be a run play. You need to be 100% on it. So when you drop that, you're kind of starting from behind the chains, and then second down run wasn't really successful. And now you're putting yourself, you know, you're in the shotgun. If you're the quarterback, you're in your own end zone, and you have a third and long. And uh, this is one of those where, you know, maybe a screen, maybe a draw. But, again, this UD offense, they do like to take shots. Quincy Watson's in the backfield. O'Connor pulls it back, scrambling, nice little move. Runs through a defender, but he's just shy of the first down. Couldn't tell if that was Ty Trinner who came up with the... And is O'Connor slow getting up? And he is. Yeah, it looks like down. It's a pretty good shot from the defender stepping up there. Elijah Glover looked like number three. Going into the ribs of O'Connor. Looks like he got his leg caught on the marker, too. O'Connor's missed some time this year. Zach Marker, his backup, has as well. It's O'Connor down on the Villanova sideline. We'll check on him when we come back to Newark. Timeout on the field. Ooh. 
So Ryan O'Connor is up back on the near sideline. Just threw a pass though and kind of recoiled and grabs that lower left side. Now he gets hit there by Elijah Glover's kind of right forearm going out of bounds, but then he trips over the first down marker and falls on that side as well. So it could be one, it could be both, right. but he's clearly not feeling well right now as Delaware gets set to punt. Yeah, so hopefully they'll, you know, they're going to punt here and he'll have some time to kind of uh, shake it off, but he's going into the tent right now. The run at least gives, it's a fake! And maybe, nope, they are short. Ryan Cardi gambles a fake punt deep in his own end, and they're less than a yard short of the first down. Coach talked about discipline here. You can see they just snap it right to the up back. And just really great discipline by this Villanova defense to be able to stay home, right? Focus on your alignment, your assignment, and they're home there to make a play and get a turnover on downs. It's Braden Bros that took the snap, that got the snap, and then Shane Hartzell, one of their starting linebackers, goes low in the hole, cuts him down, and Villanova takes it back inside the UD 15. Mark Ferrante certainly loves that. Yeah, with the injury and the timeout, it probably gave him a little bit of time to talk about it, right? Be careful of a fake here. It's fourth and less than a yard. Great starting field position for Villanova. Jackson to the outside. He's inside the five, but there's a flag behind all of this for a hold. Holding. Offense. Number 88. Be a 10-yard penalty. First down. So Villanova has 99 yards on the ground here, and a couple times it's just been that outside zone play. Right, they're going to hand the ball off, and, and this running back is just going to get all the way around the outside. Right there, you can clearly see that there's a hold by Antonio Johnson. Good call by the refs there. and uh, Now, again, it puts them in kind of a tough spot. They're behind the chains again. We saw what happened last time. Again, it's first and 20. Let's see if they can kind of chip away and put themselves in a good, manageable you know, second and third down moving forward. Johnson is Villanova's starting tight end. They don't throw to that spot often, just nine combined catches by the top two guys on the depth chart. As Villanova with the edge in points, the edge in yards, but right now also the edge in penalties, which they don't want as they get back a couple here inside the 20. Yeah, that time I'm watching the safety play there. Uh, Christian Pierce was actually kind of playing really hard downhill against that run game. So again, that's one of those things you'll see is, um, is Chris Bowden going to be able to see that and maybe run a little play action to take advantage of these aggressive UD safeties? Second and 15 after the hold and then that run from Jalen Jackson. Rayshon Pringle, the most dangerous Villanova wide receiver, is the middle guy in the bottom of your screen. Zero look here. It's Jackson spinning through traffic. I'm really impressed with Jackson's ability to, to break that first tackle and make a play. He's, he's really done a good job staying on his feet, plays with great balance, and he's pretty sudden when he makes his moves as well. It's Jackson Again, Taylor in the hole that couldn't yeah, wrap him up. That's, that's Jackson Taylor. That's the leading tackler and the guy who just makes a ton of plays on this Delaware defense. So it's good. It's kind of like best on best, right? Delaware's really great up the middle. Villanova has all these great running backs, and then, oh, yeah, Connor Watkins can actually do it around this part of the field as well. Third and 13 for Villanova, certainly within field goal range, but they want six. And Delaware showing his zero look. See if they back out of it this time. Watkins hit as he throws. Jaron Hayek makes his first catch of the afternoon to the 12-yard line bringing up fourth down. Good job by Connor Watkins, recognizing that he needs to get the ball out of his hands quickly. He's able to get it out there to Hayek. Good job by the Delaware defense. That's a little bit of a change up there. I don't think I've seen zero so far, and then they run it two plays in a row. Now again, a little bit of cat and mouse game. Villanova goes back to the sideline. We'll see what adjustments they make. Most teams going into the week, they have, all right, against zero, this is what we want to do. They have a zero check. And so, uh, you know, we'll see if Villanova has that and, um, and what they do next time out. Matthew Mercurio on for the field goal. Low snap. They got it down. Kick is away. And it is no good. Fondacaro did his best to pick it up. But the snap by Ben Wheelis short hopped him. 
and nobody can score in this end zone. That's two missed field goals and a pick for teams going left to right. That's supposed to be the easy way, right? It's, uh, but that, that's a great momentum shift for this Delaware team that really needed it, right? They had that fourth down that they tried to fake punt. They weren't able to get it, but the defense stands up and is able to come away on that drive, giving up zero points. Now we see Zach Marker in the game here at quarterback. I'm trying to see where Ryan O'Connor is on the UD sideline as this drive begins on the ground. And no gain on that run from Marcus Yorns. Yeah, so not a ton of experience for Zach Marker. He has started two games, but what you're going to see out of him is a little bit more of the run game out of him. He's great in that quick passing game. I think he doesn't have as much experience. Yeah, Ryan O'Connor... Not to interrupt, Pat, he does not like the way he feels when he throws. He's kind of hiding behind the bottom of the stands, threw a pass, and you saw him walk away and dejectedly take his chin straps off. And now he's just kind of watching downfield as Marker dances free, shovels one, and it's caught unexpectedly almost there by Youngblood. Yeah, th this is exactly what Zach Marker does. I think he probably worked the wrong side of the field here. And that's, again, something that you kind of need to work out as a young quarterback, making sure you're seeing the whole defense. But a good job finding a completion there and make, getting yourself into a manageable third down. So you can see he just he, he, he's great at, at escaping and being maneuverable in that pocket. And a good job, again, just getting a couple yards, get yourself into a manageable third down. You always have Marcus Yarns there that you can hand the ball off to, averaging you know, seven and a half yards a carry. So just get yourself in a good position. This is third and six. Marker backing up, stepping up now over the middle. That's Bruce. Still going across the 45-yard line with a UD first down. Again, love the movement in the pocket from Zach Marker. And then a great throw right on the money to Braden Bros, who makes a tackle. And now Delaware is going to try to move fast. And right when they get around to this, this part of the field, they like to take some deep shots as well. Yarn straight ahead, head down into Nova territory. Yeah, good quick play. You're trying to, you know, the, the Nova defense is a little bit in disarray after the big play. Let's get up, up on the line of scrimmage quickly and get a good positive yards, and you're getting six on first down. Marker, a long look yeah. at the sideline. The uh, the canopy guys were late putting up the the blocks for their uh, the signal callers there. Yarns, straight speed to the 41, and a Blue Hens first down. That's great. That's huge for a young quarterback to be able to hand the ball off to someone as dynamic as Marcus Yarns is. And a, again, a great job by this UD offensive line. They're just going to double down and 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 just move guys off of the line of scrimmage. Coach Ferrante talked about how his defensive linemen need to try to occupy two offensive linemen. Good start to the afternoon from Marcus Yarns in his return to health. Marker wants to throw underneath the tight end, Sessoms. That's one of those where he probably got it out of his hands two steps earlier. So just take what the defense gives you. You have pressure right in your lap. Try to just get that ball out a little bit quicker. But again, Zach Marker is one of those guys who thinks he can do everything with his feet, right? So he wants to, you know, can, can I get around this guy and then dump it off at the last second? He's a senior, played at Iowa Central Community College a year ago. Facing a second and 10 here from Villanova's 41. Sessoms is in motion. Marker holds, heaves, far sideline. It's over the top of Phil Lutz incomplete. We talked about how these Villanova corners, they like to come up and press. And a lot of times when Delaware sees that, they want to they throw those 50-50 balls. We saw it earlier where Connor Watkins threw it up and the UD defender was able to make a good play. This time just a little bit overthrown there from, from Zach Marker. And again, he's, he's you know probably wasn't expecting to, but to make that throw in this game, right? I'm sure he's prepping for it during the week. Um, but one of those things that you're trying to get in a rhythm in this game and, uh, and, and get your feet in and, and kind of get them under you and, and and get ready to go. Third and 10 here, but we're probably in Ryan Cardi fourth down land, right. so he's got two chances to get the 10. He'll try to run forward here, bouncing outside, shoved out of bounds. Yeah. 
and now he's hurt. It's going to be fourth down so for some UDQB. Right. Some, uh, just design draw play here. You can see it was, I think it was a good clean hit. It was close to out of bounds. And then Marker hits two or three different teammates on his way down. Ryan O'Connor already injured. And now Zach Marker is not getting up either here for the Blue Hens. Looks like Ryan O'Connor is standing on the field. So it looks like he might come back in. And... We're going to play with the training staff still huddled around Marker down below us on the near sideline. Fourth and two. O'Connor back in, as Pat just said. And now Ryan Cardi is asking for a timeout. timeout. Angrily. Delaware. Looking out at Jeremy D'Angelo, the referee. 30 second timeout. Did he not think the play clock had been reset correctly? Well, I, I think everyone was kind of on the sideline looking at Zach, and then next thing you know, they're, they're ready for play, and, and they're calling the play, so. Nick Minicucci is the third quarterback on UD's depth chart. He's catching Ryan O'Connor's warm-ups with UD in trouble at that QB spot. However you do the holidays, do it together in the Chevy that's right for you. The strong and capable Chevy Silverado, the award-winning Chevy Equinox, or the all-new Chevy Trax. This holiday season, do more together in a new Chevy. Get 1.9% financing on all 2023 Silverado 1500 pickups, or get $2,000 total cash allowance on this Silverado. Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. For over 40 years, Delaware Hospice has helped families cope with the overwhelming stress that accompanies a loved one's serious illness. Our team of compassionate experts gives you the freedom to focus on what matters most, spending time with loved ones. Our community outreach programs provide non-medical resources during a serious illness. And if you need in-home support during treatment, our palliative care team will work side-by-side -side with your physician to manage symptoms. You can count on Delaware Hospice because we're more than hospice, giving you the freedom to focus on what matters most. Ryan O'Connor getting set to be back in for Delaware. Zach Marker, it's his right leg. They got hurt on that sideline tackle, and he made a very slow walk with the help of two trainers. No pressure on that right leg down the sideline in the tenth a second ago. It's hard to tell what exactly happened to him because he went through so many bodies, and the sidelines here are so tight, there's no place to go for anybody. So... Finally, we saw when he got up as the right leg, and it was completely useless to him as he went down the sideline. So this is fourth and two. Still a zero on the board for UD. O'Connor runs up behind center. And the direct snap is to Yarns, and Villanova's got that covered again. Again, Kind of, you know, you do that drill where you kind of go up and you try to get them to, to jump off sides, and then an interesting play call here. Kind of get all those linebackers up at the line of scrimmage, and then Ryan O'Connor walks away, and they snap it and try to run it right up the middle. But great job by that, that Villanova defense of Elijah Glover getting in, playing in the backfield on a fourth down play, and uh, making another turnover on downs. Danny Abraham came through from the linebacker level as well to help Glover, and now on the fake punt on their last possession, and then that fourth and two, that's two big time tackles in the backfield by Villanova to stop Delaware drives. Wildcats have it back again. They scored in less than a minute. The scoreboard hasn't changed since then as Barley spun off that hit from Trainer. He gets a yard maybe for second down. Yeah, again, they're just—they're not going to get away from that run game, right? It's what they want to do. They want to remain balanced. And 
So, I, again, I think they saw something on the outside there. They want to continue to work those edges. But the last couple drives, Delaware's done a much better job of containing these running backs and keeping them inside. I can't believe, though, that we've had, what, 23 minutes of game time now, and there has not been one shot down the field by yep. this Villanova pass attack. Yeah, and, it, and it's one of those things that you said it. They'll, they'll lull you to sleep, right? They're going to keep on running, keep on running, and the next thing you know, Pringle's going to be running right down the field. And there he is. And out of his hands, it comes again. The ball is loose again. Called incomplete. Delaware this time picks it up just in case. Rolling on the field was just an like we talked about, right? Pringle down the down. seam. That's exactly what they saw and, and what they wanted to attack. Good job. Delaware brings a little bit of pressure here. And the ball is on the money, but Nick Ware just does a great job getting his hand in there. And that's another play. That's like really close. Right on the line of being a catch and a fumble. Two steps and a football move, right? I, I, I think he had the, the two steps, but it was probably a little bit of a bobble. It's third and nine after the incompletion. Villanova likes this formation with the two running backs on the same side of the QB. Watkins zips one, diving catch, Hayek first down. And Hayek's, I mean, he was the guy, right? He was supposed to be all CAA coming into this season, and he's been working through some injuries, and you've seen him with a couple really crucial targets, and he's a guy that you know that Connor Watkins really depends on. And a nice job to make that catch on the way down, Herring behind in coverage. Villanova converts the third and nine. Barley on a first down run, again survives first contact and gets two to the 50. You know, Connor Watkins is a guy who's played a lot of football, right, but I'm really impressed so far. He kind of seems like he knows where he wants to go with the ball. There's not a lot of hesitation as he's working his way through his reads, and he's putting the ball on the money when he needs to as well. Getting late second quarter. Villanova has had the edge in yardage time of possession as well but just that opening drive touchdown they missed a field goal on a bad snap on their last possession they've also turned the ball over on downs wide receiver screen has nowhere to go this time the ball is out UD says they have it and they do It was Ayo Durajaye, the running back, the intended target, caught it, took a pop, put it on the turf, and the Blue Hens recover. Let's see who dislodged the ball here. Just trying to set up a tunnel screen coming back inside. Jack Hall there. Looks like Jack Hall probably got a hand in along with Dylan Trainer, And then a great job by Jackson Taylor. Again, what we're talking about on defense, when these defenders see the ball on the ground, they have to attack it. Great job there by the savvy vet, Jackson Taylor. We'll give the knockout to Hall. Taylor certainly the recovery. And the Blue Hens continue their search for their first points of the afternoon. And again, this is a team that has been lethal before halftime over the last month or so. Third quarterback in the game now. That's Nick Manicucci out here. And so I know he's had a couple reps so far, but again, this is, a, this is the third quarterback you're playing today. I think you're going to see them actually... He's talking about should I pull that one there, but he's he's really going to need to uh, really going to need to lean on Marcus Yarns here. Minicucci, a freshman from New Jersey, a Don Bosco a Don Bosco prep product, one of the premier programs in the Garden State. Coming near sideline for a young blood catch. And the second spin, he takes a thud from Abraham to end the play. And Abraham doing some talking on the sideline as well. Yeah, but I love the play call, right? You have a new quarterback in. Just give me a hitch on the outside. You had access. Just throw that hitch. Get the ball out of your hand. And now here, be careful taking that second shot on the sideline. Now you're putting your, your new quarterback in an empty set. Let's see what they do here. On third and five, plus territory. Handles the snap, does Minicucci. Running with blockers. The somersault inside the 40 is going to move the chains. 
A little bit of mishandling of the snap there. You got a lot going on. You got to bring him in in motion. You have to call the snap at the right time. And then it looked like that was probably going to be a handoff to Yarns. <laughs> he fumbles it and he says, all right, I'm just going to follow Marcus Yarns. He knows exactly where he's going. So good job getting up the field and getting that first down. And some help from downfield blocking from Youngblood, the receiver. Minakuchi pulls it back. Braden Bruce spinning free down the sideline and in for the touchdown. Great job. I mean, third QB on the roster coming in, knowing exactly where he wants to go with the football, and then Braden Bros taking care of the rest, breaking a tackle, and there was no one else home. Again, let's watch it, a little play action. You see Braden Bros coming in motion there, and he's just going to run a little wheel route. Great ball placement. He puts it in the back shoulder. He protects the tight end from a big hit. Braden Bros take care of the rest. Second touchdown pass of his freshman campaign. Minakuchi threw it. Bruce did the second half of the job. And now the PAT to tie the game. And that is up and through from Alex Schmoke. So we saw Nate Reed try their field goal in the first quarter. Schmoke handles PATs like he did a week ago at Campbell. And Minakuchi getting a lot of love <laughs> on the sideline with Delaware finally in the end zone. Yeah, of course he is. Great drive. Great job just knowing where to go with the ball, right? You're kind of, you're the third string quarterback and, and you have to, you know, make sure that you're staying in all these meetings and, and it appears he's doing it, right? He knows exactly where to go with the ball. They're still using motion in their offense, so he's doing a good job, you know, with the, with the um, you know, the ins and outs of calling the play and getting up to the line of scrimmage and, you know, getting to the point where he actually snapped the ball, but then after the snap, he's also doing a great job. For Braden Bros, back-to-back games with a touchdown catch, three on the season, and UD is now even at seven as we inch towards halftime here in Newark. Alongside Pat Devlin, I'm Andrew Bogus. Thanks so much for being with us. It's the Battle of the Blue. It's a top 10 meeting. It's senior day, and we're still deciding the CAA crown and the league's automatic bid into the FCS bracket. This afternoon's leadership showcase highlights special team or highlights special teams coordinator and safeties coach Art Link under Coach Link's guidance. The Blue Hens have averaged 20 yards per punt return against CAA competition. That's the best mark in the conference. Sponsored by Easter Seals Delaware and Maryland's Eastern Shore, celebrating 75 years of creating an inclusive community, and we're just getting started. High short kick into the wind. Fair caught by Nova, shy of their own 30. They just coughed it up, did Villanova. So at the very least here, late second quarter, Connor Watkins wants to steady the ship for that far sideline of Mark Ferrante's team. Yeah, he's got the experience to be able to do that, but now the momentum is on that Delaware side of the ball, right? Great job getting the fumble recovery and then turning around and scoring a touchdown off of that sudden change situation. And now the Villanova offense comes back out, and they need to be able to wrestle that momentum back away from the UD side of the football. Villanova has two timeouts remaining. So does Delaware with 3.17 to go before halftime. This game has already had a failed fake punt, a couple of turnovers, a couple of missed field goals, and a big shot here immediately in the blue hen territory go the wildcats and jaron hayek continues to have a big first half yeah hey great catch there but again that was the, almost the same play that they ran with pringle running that post on the inside last drive as well that time again balls on the money and a great job with a nice explosive play to start out the drive and that's how you do it that's how you wrestle that momentum back away from the defense four catches already for hayek Watkins has time here, slinging Sanchez. Did he get a foot down? He did. What a catch on the near sideline from Jalen Sanchez. Great catch, but great throw as well. Mateo Vendamia was out there backing up, and you can see he just lobbed it up, and wow, amazing job. Good in the NFL, two feet down. When that came out of his hand, I thought that was nowhere near catchable for Sanchez. <laughs> I thought he was throwing it away. Yeah, so just to get his hands on it, right. impressive. And he gets the foot down for the catch, and in two plays, Nova's up to the UD 26. And 
And again, Watkins has time, takes that shot down the field, misses Pringle, but you saw the flag fly. Yeah, it looked like they were throwing the flag on Nick Ware there. Looked like he didn't really have any help either. There's a flag in the backfield as well. Which Maybe might be roughing, roughing the passer. The passer yep. But I think they found something here in the middle where they're running that number two on the seam route or the inside post route. And it looks like there's not a lot of safety help on the inside. And that time Nick Ware got caught in a, in a lot of space against a really fast, really good player in Pringle. And was we had multiple falls on the play, both against the defense. Pass interference, defense. That penalty has declined. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, zero. 15 so yards Jackson Taylor called for roughing the passer. He came late. Here's our first look at it. Taylor is zero on a delayed blitz. Correction, we will accept the DPI, the pass interference, mm. as this will be a 15-yard penalty, and we will decline and the I pass interference. And I guess that left arm around the throat decline is the call? Decline the roughing the passer, correction. I don't know. Yeah, it's the... Uh, Pass interference either way, it doesn't matter. Yeah, right. The pass interference was legitimate, yep. so you can argue against roughing the passer, but then P.I. would have counted. Either way, it's a first and ten for Nova at the 11-yard line. Final two minutes of an eventful first half in the latest edition of the Battle of the Blue. They're going to run on first down, looking for a hole. Fighting forward for just a yard is D. Will Barley. You know, Villanova knows that Delaware likes to take shots on offense. You wonder if they do call a couple of run plays here because they, they love running the ball, but also to take a little bit of time off of that time clock. Out. Delaware. Maybe a little gingerly. Barley Please reset heads the game off, and there's a timeout one. here. Not sure who called it, but it stops the clock with 1.51 left in the quarter. Well, I think that's good clock management if that was Delaware who called that timeout. And, and Delaware did call it. I didn't hear the announcement. The scoreboard just changed. So it down to one UD timeout left. And they're trying to do something to get the ball back right. with some time on the clock before halftime. Absolutely. They're thinking about it in the reverse, right? Let's conserve as much time as we possibly can. We have an explosive offense. I don't care if we have you know, 50 seconds on the clock, we're still going to probably try to try to go after it and put some points on the board before the end of the half. So here's what's happening elsewhere. Albany, I think, as most expected, up on Monmouth. Richmond has taken the lead on William & Mary. Now, the key thing is that Albany score because they're involved in some of the six tie-breaking scenarios that will come, there could come down to point differential. So if they win by a lot, that's a concern for these two teams because right now they both in conference point differential are up on Albany, but the way these that score and this score is going, the Great Danes could jump ahead and steal the automatic bid. Watkins looking left, fading, end zone, touchdown! Hayek again! We go preseason all CAA. When it, you know, when it comes down to it, you think players, not plays. And I'm sure he's got a lot of confidence with Jaron Hayek, and he goes to him right there in a big spot. Connor Watkins, this is pretty. Back foot with some air over the defender. Hayek, the concentration, and Villanova has the lead again. Yeah, that's one of those that you just drop it in the bucket, right? Sometimes as a quarterback, you just walk out onto the field, you drop a bag of balls, and you're just throwing right into a bucket. Khalil Dawsey did all he could there, but... Great route, great ball, ends up in a touchdown. And then the extra point for the 14-7 lead. Watkins doesn't have the gaudiest numbers throwing the football, but a year ago, he led Villanova to a win in this game. Only completed, I think, five passes. This year, that arm's been on display. His coach said he kind of harnessed the arm. Yeah. He's not missing guys. Right. He's throwing with touch there as well. So it's not always a lot of completions and a lot of yards, but it's impactful throws, and that was a big one well, there. He leads the country in yards per completion and yards per pass attempt. And Coach said, like, we're not taking more shots downfield. He's just so much more accurate this year. And he is, you know, that second year under his belt, 
and uh, you know he's got a lot of a lot of guys in the wide receiving room who are who he's just comfortable with, right? And you can see it right there, just being able to you know not give it a second thought and, and make a great throw. And there he is, 10 of 16, 111, and that touchdown. Yeah, his team has its second seven-point lead of this half, but maybe they scored too quick because there's 144 and a timeout for the Blue Hens to work with. Good kickoff, it'll be Bermudez from his own goal line. Has a seam, has a cutback, and then down he goes shy of the 30, and there's a flag. Flag down looking like in the area of holding. There was some room to work with there for Jojo Bermudez, who did not play a week ago. During the return, illegal block in the back, return team number two. It'll be a 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. Yeah, you talked about Jojo Bermudez. He's just really such a talented player, but he was out last week, and I really haven't seen any plays specifically designed to go to him this week. And you just kind of wonder is he maybe not 100%? And coach wasn't really sure how much of the game plan he should be a part of. But I think if this UD offense wants to be explosive, I think Jojo is going to be uh, involved in this game plan moving forward. Nick Minicucci remains Delaware's quarterback. Their starter, Ryan O'Connor, got hurt. Left side, left hip, tried to come back in. Throwing seemed to be a problem. While he was off the field, Zach Marker was playing, hurt his right leg on a tackle going out of bounds. So here's the freshman from Jersey who just threw a touchdown pass. Young blood, the catch with the defender right in front of him, he couldn't shake loose. And so two minute drill, the first first couple plays, you just want to have success, right? So I love the first play call where you're just really throwing a hitch to your number two receiver. Nice and easy throw, get a couple yards, see if you can kind of get this drive going before the end of the half. That was Ty Trin, one on one with Young blood that got him down. And Coach Ferrante talked about how great they are tackling in space. It's just it's their bread and butter. It's what they do. If they're going to have you know a, a lot of you know, motion in their defense. They have to be able to be aligned, assigned correctly, but then make tackles in space. Minakuchi pulls it back, takes off, trying to get outside. Got to the 21-yard line, and now it's third down. Third and six. Or excuse me, third and four. So again, we'll see how fast they go here. They have a freshman quarterback who hasn't played a lot of football. You know, they didn't have maybe an explosive on the first two plays, so... Let's see if the, yeah, it looks like they're just going to let the clock wind down here. Play clock's at 20. Game clock is at 28. And clearly in no rush to play this as safe as possible. Already down seven, somewhat deep in their own end. They'll just burn a timeout here. With one on the play clock and eight or nine timeout. seconds to play. Delaware. Last of the half, 30 and seconds timeout. As aggressive as Ryan Carty wants to be, this is, and as good as the last drive yeah. from Minakuchi was, yeah. you, you got to be super careful here. Yep, and, and also when he's looking at his play sheet, you know, I'm sure he had some, some things lined up if Zach Marker came into the game, and I'm sure he thought about what happens if Nick Minakuchi gets in the game, but I'm sure even he would love to kind of get in there at halftime and really, you know, hey, hey, sit down, let's look at the play sheet. What are your favorite plays on first down, second down, third and short, medium, in the red zone, right? So to be able to go talk to your coach about all that stuff and get on the same page, there's a certain value to that, and I think it makes sense. You know, not putting the pedal to the metal here and putting your freshman quarterback in a bad position. Because I'm sure Nick gets some practice reps, but that face-to-face... -face, right. I don't know if he got any with the best, right? Although with Mark a little banged up, maybe he yeah. was getting a little more yep. than usual, but he's certainly not in the forefront of conversations of what do you like, what do you want to run? Coming up at halftime here in Newark, bigger than basketball. We are in that time of year where basketball is starting and college football is ending and athletic department staffs are just worked to the bone. <laughs> Sarah Jenkins of the UD women's basketball team, the head coach, they feature on her at halftime. Stats, highlights, all the breakdown of this first half. Marcus Yarns tripped up across the 30. One last chunk of yards for him. Clock stops for a second because of the first down. Four seconds on the clock. 
one more play if they wanted, and they don't. There's the clock restarting, and off go the Blue Hens. They gave up points immediately, lost two quarterbacks. They got in the end zone on that, but Nova scored late in the quarter. So at the break, it's the Wildcats by seven. Every bite, better with Pepsi. Want to get to the game without having to worry about traffic? Dart to your destination. By using the Dart Transit app, you will know when your bus will arrive with real-time bus information. With the Dart Pass app, you can pay your bus fare touch-free. Just purchase your ticket on the app, then scan your phone under the Dart Validator. Need a ride to game day? Dart provides reduced fares for students. Dart can also take you down Main Street with an array of dining and shopping options. No matter where your day takes you, let Dart do the driving for you. Enjoy the ride. Do you know what a blue hen is? It's prideful. Spirited. Blue Hen never backs down from a challenge. And we're there to support them. Delaware Orthopedic Specialist, the official orthopedic partner of University of Delaware Athletics. I, I think I'm long overdue. I think I should have had a show for a long time because I'm actually really funny and I am really funny. <laughs> okay. <I'm>, okay. <laughs> the first thing I think of when I think of Coach Jenkins is laughing. Like, just jokes. Eat up three, one, two, three. Eat. Eat. Tara, put your hair up so you don't look like you're off. Why does that have to do with anything? Put it off. Danae, where'd you get the headband? <laughs> she just exudes love, you know, like she's always about hugging people, caring for people, making sure everyone is being better for themselves and for others. We want every person that interacts with our program, that comes to a practice, that comes to a game, every kid on our team, you want them to feel loved and to feel that like they're important and to feel like they matter. And that's something that we preach every day. Um, and that's kind of, you know, the focus of our culture and what we do. Um, but we have a lot of fun. I mean, <laughs> I keep telling you, I'm really funny. Almost doesn't count, baby. I come to work early so that I could get my work done because when she comes to work, my day's over. So I spend, when she's at work, I spend probably 75% of my day in her office. So if I'm not in her office, she's screaming down the hall, Danae, Danae, you know. Our team matches her personality. We take that love, that energy, and we put that on the floor and um, with each other and then off the court as well. She'll call me, or she'll send me some stupid text, or she'll scream my name down the hall. I got an idea. And she has like that goofy little look, like, I got an idea. And so I'm like, oh Lord, I'm scared of what it's gonna be, but it always ends up being something really funny. I had this idea in mind of going out there, doing those softball drills. I mean, I knew I was gonna be terrible at it, but I wanted them to be a lot worse than they were. <laughs> this is hard. Sarah's either screaming in my office or Sarah is screaming at me or there's something loud going on in my office and softball always turns that corner and comes and sees us. So just building that relationship within, the, within our office and that's how we got to this idea of having our staff play softball. Good luck watching that. Yes. 
Yeah. But what do I do? Nothing right now? Nothing right now. Okay. Oh. Did I look athletic? So it kind of made me mad because they weren't that bad, but uh, it was fun, you know. They, they're they're still they still have that athletic piece to them. I've lost all athleticism in my old age. Um, a lot of her, I, <laughs> a lot of her ideas are definitely, you know, they're all about being building relationships and building community. So like, she came up to me, she's like, I want to do a dance, and I'm like, okay. She's like can you find out if dance could do a dance? Ooh, they'll do a dance with us. I was like, okay. So then it turned out to be really great. She is, I think she knows her limitations. I was like, actually this year, the dance is a lot easier. So I feel like, cause I'm a terrible dancer, but I feel really comfortable with it. So I think we'll be really good. So she's not gonna be like up front, center, solo. But she also does want to be seen. So you'll see she has a little like entry piece, you know, where she's kind of front and center. But she does take it seriously. To the top, people. <laughs> she says she like reviews the tape. We we film it, and she says she practices it. So she's very serious about getting it right. But she does know her limitations. <laughs> I think I get on their nerves sometimes because I always want to hang out. We're a dysfunctional family, but it's all love at the end of the day. <laughs>
Welcome back to Newark as halftime continues between Villanova and Delaware. Andrew Bogush and former UDQB Pat Devlin with you here from the top W Raymond Field. The day began, we came on the air trying to explain very delicately all the different scenarios at play here for clinching the CAA's automatic bid. The bad news for the two teams down below us is Albany's up three touchdowns on Monmouth, which throws point differential really to the forefront right now. But first things first is we've decided nothing down below, and someone needs to find a way to win these second 30 minutes and get a W here today. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you told Coach Carter that he'd be on his third quarterback and they have turned the ball over on downs three times in the first half and they're only down by seven, I think he'd be pretty happy with that. And so right now they're back in the locker room trying to figure out what does Nick like to do most what are the shot plays we can we can have? They probably had some more trick plays up their sleeve. You know, can we still run those plays? Do we need to adjust them at all? Yeah, why would a Delaware Villanova game be simple? We've right. had multiple turnovers on downs, one via penalty. Delaware's on its third quarterback. We've had a failed field two failed field goals, a failed fake punt all over the place. But this is really the headline today. There is still a way, there are simpler ways to get to the finish line, but this is the complicated six different ties possible after today's action, including those two three-way ties at the top. Now, Richmond is trying to beat William & Mary, but the Albany score is turning into a significant one as well because it throws point differential into the mix. But as you can see, and that's what all of those asterisks are for the three games. They, those tiebreakers, will settle on point differential. And you know, we asked both coaches during the week, Pat, if they're caring about that. And they both, Coach Ferrante's a little more, yeah, maybe we are. Right. I don't know if it's going to dictate play calling, but it does matter to win the auto bid for these two schools because it might save you a game with a bye next weekend. So they should be paying attention, right, to what's going on elsewhere? Yeah, I think so. But at the end of the day, I think they, you know, they're going to want to put their foot on the pedal, right? It's a, it's a pretty close game. And I think they're going to want to win by as much as they can win by if they have the opportunity to do so. And so at the end of the day, they're just going to go out there and try to score as many points as they can no matter what. And again, Delaware doing that maybe with their third string quarterback out there. Ryan O'Connor banged up, try to play through it. Zach Marker certainly seems to be done for the day with a right leg injury. And Delaware, whoever's playing quarterback, they're trying to solve this Villanova riddle. This is the 17th year where this game has been called the Battle of the Blue. And Delaware's lost 14 of the first 16 He's, was, I'm sorry to point out, <laughs> part of those losses. Absolutely. There's a lot just that weighing on this Blue Hen program to just beat Villanova right. finally. Right. Well, we talked about it, though, that there are a lot of transfers here into this UD team, and they might not really care about the Ignorance history. is bliss. Yeah, exactly. And so, <laughs> and so, you know, Nick Manicucci, he's never played in the Battle of the Blue game, right? And so it's kind of great for him to just kind of come in and, hey, just let it rip, right? Be you. I'm sure he's played in a lot of big games at Don Bosco Prep mm -hmm. in high school, and so he's probably got a little bit of that experience. He's also apparently played some big games as a youth player in Jersey <laughs> with our producer Frank Lasquadro <laughs> right. in charge. Only Frank was excited for two Delaware QBs yep. to move out of the way for Nick to get out there. And we saw him when he was allowed to go through a full drive, not deep in the clock in the first half, led their only touchdown drive was because of his right arm. Absolutely. And it was great watching him just to, just to know where to go with the football, right? Handle the operation before the snap. Get everyone lined up move the men in motion that need to go in motion and then know where to go with the ball and go there quickly. That's exactly what he did. Regardless of all those playoff permutations, this game last year turned on back-to-back -back blocked punts in the fourth quarter by Villanova. So anything can happen in our second 30 minutes. They're on the way when we come back to Newark.
This is where everything starts. It's a place of new beginnings, new opportunities, and a new identity. We are the Coastal Athletic Association, and from the beaches to the city streets, we are united to succeed at an elite level, in competition, in our communities, in our lives. This is the tide that lifts us, the fire that burns inside all of us. This is our moment, our new chapter. This is CAA football, and we are united in excellence. Delaware Imaging Network is Delaware's most trusted and preferred imaging provider. When you need fast, accurate results, trust the team of experts at Delaware Imaging Network. You know that feeling, right? That blue hen feeling? It's a fight song singing, fountain splashing, Greek life stepping, stone balloon mug having, Klondike Kate's Nacho Tuesday kind of feeling. It's a homecoming touchdown score, Deer Park dancing, double march madness bracket, met the maid of honor at my wedding kind of feeling. Is it like this? Yes. What about this? Oh yeah. It's a pride that swells and makes you buy little baby onesies and has your mamma crocheting UD blankets at midnight. It's like being a UD record-breaking, Super Bowl-winning NFL quarterback. Wait, that's like super specific. Just go with it, Joe. All right. Our time here at UD gave us a home away from home and helped shape who we are today. So no matter where life has taken you or how far we've gone, remember that we Beautiful afternoon in Delaware, just moments away from the start of the third quarter before the Blue Hens and Wildcats resume. Here's today's built-in Delaware player spotlight. It's Newark native, Delaware Military Academy grad TJ Thomas. The Hens offensive lineman has appeared in each game this fall, a key member of that rotation up front. Iron Source is the most reliable choice for new and used construction equipment sales, rentals, and service. So just, Pat, kind of parsing through all of these different clinching, tie-breaking scenarios as Ryan O'Connor, without a helmet, talks to Nick Minicucci, helmet on, which leads you to believe the freshman is staying at quarterback for the second half because of the injuries. The way Albany is beating Monmouth by 21 points, that gives them the edge in point differential in a couple of different scenarios involving Delaware and Villanova. So especially for Delaware, they want to win. They have, they have to win today to stay in the tie. Right. But then they also want Richmond to lose because if they end up in just a tie with Albany, Delaware wins that one based on a common opponent. They beat New Hampshire, but New Hampshire beat the Great Danes. But a three-way tie involving Richmond is where that point differential could hurt UD as this second half is about to begin with a Villanova kickoff. Yeah, so looking through some of these stats, the Villanova offense was really balanced. 17 rushes and 16 passes. 111 net passing yards. Net rushing yards, 109. So just really balanced, and that's exactly who they want to be. And, and I don't think they come out and, and try to be anyone different in this second half. For Delaware, we'll kind of see what their game plan is, right? Whether, they have, whether it's Nick Manicucci or Ryan O'Connor. Nick Manicucci, three Blake for three, right? So short sample size there, seconds. but um, you know, it's, great to, it's great to see a seconds. freshman come in and, and do that. Manicucci ran a bunch in high school, over 1,000 rushing yards at Don Bosco Prep. So my guess would be that he kind of fits in the Zach Marker profile more than O'Connor, right? Everything about what plays are available to Ryan Cardi? <sighs> 
I don't know. I, I could run it in high school. I couldn't <laughs> run it in college. I, I don't know. <laughs> Short um, kickoff again for JoJo Bermudez, who weaves his way across the 35-yard line. So that, that jump to CAA defense is real? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And now Bermudez is yeah. hurt. Yeah, we talked about him before when he had a return. He's such an explosive player. Looks like he's grabbing that ankle. He's been hurt the last couple of weeks. They were happy to have him back at full strength seemingly today, but now this. Okay, again, it throws a wrench in that uh, in the play calling, right? He's one of those guys that Coach Carty likes to call plays for, and you can see here he just looks like he gets rolled up in at and, the very last second. And stays he down. is still in excruciating pain as they work on that lower left leg. He's finally going to roll over, I think, here. Maybe not. So Ryan O'Connor, their starting quarterback, got drilled in the ribs and then fell hard going out of bounds. Has returned for a play or two, but doesn't seem comfortable throwing. Zach Marker hurt his right leg on a tackle out of bounds. And now Bermudez still kind of curled in pain. You can see him breathing heavily. He reacts so strongly every time his, that leg is touched or moved. Uh, they'll check on him. We'll take the break. Not the way the second half wanted to begin for UD. Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Zero never tasted so good. Try it now. Every bite better with Pepsi. Nick Minicucci rolling out, throwing on the run, missing his target. Took a hit at the end as well. The groan from the crowd looking for a flag for that. JoJo Bermudez did walk off the field, kind of, putting a little weight on his left leg with the help of the training staff. But that's now two quarterbacks. They're starting right guard in Bradley on Yewu, and now a key cog in special teams and offense. Second and ten for Yarns. Stumbled. Down he goes. Bell on the tackle for Villanova. And Good. Marcus Yarns obviously has to, play, has to play a big role in this second half with things going the way they are injury-wise yeah. for Delaware. Yeah, you mentioned all the injuries on offense, and so who do you have to lean on? You have to lean on, on your best players, right? So Marcus Yarns, they can't lose. They can't just keep him in the backfield, right? When he's been most explosive, they've motioned him out of the backfield and got him the ball in space. So they need to continue to do that. Third and eight, playing in with the wind at their back. Minacucci gets outside, bells on him, down he goes. Plus, Blaze Sparks is going to get a holding call. Yeah, good job there by Brandon Bell running down the play. You know, not giving up on it. So what do you do here? Do you accept the, the sack and have it be Bowling. fourth down? Offense. Number no, 67. Probably, that penalty is declined. Yeah, just declining. Fourth down. So I think, again, for Nick Manicucci to be successful here, he's obviously got to lean on yarns, and, and he, they have to be successful, right? It starts up front, creating some holes for him. But also, they have a lot of yak. I think they have 86 yards of yak in the first half. And so don't lose track of Just get it to your playmakers quickly and let them get some yards for you. And plus, that's just easier for him to raise right? Less to read. Absolutely. It's typically in the quick game, sometimes in the screen game, but not just screening for the running back, also screening for the wide receiver. So, again, you go back to you, you want to make sure that Coach Cardi's playbook doesn't shrink too much, right? And you, and you kind of hope that they got together and they were able to, to get some of those, those plays that, that makes this offense so dynamic. That's Ryan Cost. Second time he's been out to punt. The first time, D 
deep in their own end. They ran a fake punt, and Villanova stopped it shy of the first down. The snap back to Cost. Line drive kick from his own 24. That's Pringle. Maybe the 26-yard line, well covered by UD. So here's Villanova with the lead on the field for the first time in quarter number three. Yeah, like we talked about for Villanova, it's just continuing to do what they do best and stay balanced on offense. I think we were surprised early on that they really didn't take that many shots downfield, but eventually it felt like UD started coming with the pressure and their safety starting to have to, uh, started to have to cover some of these really talented wide receivers, and that's when we saw some of those shots down the seam in that seam post, as well as the shot to the outside, and, and Connor Watkins doing a great job. 10 of 16, 111 yards and a touchdown. And we haven't seen the aspect of his other aspect of his game, which is, is the running side of things. And you know, it's funny. They're, they're certainly not dinking and dunking their way down the field. They've had a couple of 20-yard completions, 20-plus. But last week, they had touchdowns of 79 and 63 yards. Right. That's what they haven't done yet. They don't need to here with a good run on first down for Jalen Jackson. Yeah, but Pringle averages 28 per catch. Say that slowly. 28 <laughs> 20. yards a catch right. for a season, not last week. But then Jalen Sanchez is 24 yards a catch, right? <laughs> so they're number one and number two in the FCS in yards per catch. Jackson just got 12 on that first down run. They put it in his belly again through left guard into UD territory. Down near the 40. KT Say the tackle, and Villanova is driving early in half number two. Yeah, Say with a good tackle there to prevent an even longer run, but Jalen Jackson, I mean, this time he's not even touched until he gets to the safety level, but even when he's kind of getting some tough yards inside, he's really doing a great job not going down on that first hit. So he's, got a, he's, he's dynamic in himself, right? He, he can do up the middle as well as, you know, break some long runs. Jackson now on 99 yards through seven carries. The big one was the first one, 55 yards. You saw those during halftime highlights. Barley has his number called this time. And Dylan Trainer pops him inside the 40, but pushed him forward in the process. Okay, so you take Jalen Jackson out and you put in D. Will Barley, another fifth year guy, averaging 6.4 yards a carry. And, um, you know, again, you can see he got hit in the backfield there. It looked like UD had a lot of pressure in the backfield but he's just shifty enough to break a tackle and make it a positive gain on first. Villanova approaching 150 yards on the ground just past halftime. They average over 220 a contest. They had a game this year in terrible weather against Elon where they ran for 440. Watkins throwing. Hayek's been his favorite target today. And they're going to mark him down inside the 25-yard line. I thought he stepped out of bounds about five yards in the past. Let's take a look here. So just in the slot, he's going to run a little out route again. The ball's a little behind him, but a good job breaking this tackle from Alex Vias. And look at that, tight walking. Yeah, shame Great on job. me. Great job getting a couple extra yards. Good job getting upfield and getting out of bounds. Just enough green right. between the foot and the sideline. So Villanova correctly at the Blue Hen 23, another first down. To the outside, and it's incomplete. Pringle was underneath. Hayek took off down the sideline. Dawsey out there in coverage wasn't too far away from another pick six. It's always a tough one as a quarterback. You have to figure out who you're trying to read here. And here they're playing a trap two corner, so that corner is playing the flat. And he's just a little late getting there, or else he would have been walking into the end zone. Dawsey's pick six a week ago was over 100 yards, but in college they don't do the guesswork into the end zone. It's just 100 yards officially. And he had nothing but green in front of him if he could have gotten that one a step sooner. Second down for Watkins. Nova picks up a blitz. Back shoulder Sanchez turning up field inside the 10. The drive keeps churning. Yeah, good job again from Connor Watkins. Another great throw right on the money. Literally hits him in the back shoulder. But that ball was on a, on a line. He knew he had pressure. He knew he had to get the ball out quickly. And he does just that. First and goal from the seven. A fade, Hayek over his head. 
similar to the way they scored late in the second quarter, but that one overthrown. Yeah, that one a little bit overthrown. They actually brought zero coverage that time, and they had one dropper come out, but again, they're getting a free rusher when they're playing that zero coverage, and they did it two times in a row when in the second quarter on the other side of the field. Let's see if that's something that they want to come back to right here. Zero meaning no safety, middle of the field? Right, so they're going to bring everyone from a blitz perspective, and then they're just going to be man-on-man -man against all the wide receivers. Two running backs, two receivers, and the tight end Johnson, top of your screen in the second for Nova, on second and goal from the seven. Inside handoff with nowhere to go. Trainer and McGowan eat up Ayo Durajaye. Yeah, great job playing in the backfield. Those guys really, the, the middle of this UD defense is really the, the, the heart of their defense and, and where they probably play the best football. And uh, Villanova's had a lot of success on the in the run not as much when they get to this low red area. So now brings up a third and long situation here, right? On that second down, I'm sure they were hoping to get a couple more yards. But coming into the week, you always have, you know, a couple red zone plays when you're between the one and the five, the five and the 10, the 10 and the 20. So I'm sure they have something drawn up just for this situation. They lost two on that play. So now it's third and goal from the nine. Again, could be zero coverage here, and it is. Watkins looking for somebody, throwing over everybody's head and out of bounds. At that time, it just looked like him and Jaron Hayek weren't on the same page. And again, it's one of those things, you know, these guys have played a ton of football together. But, you know, when you're just in the heat of the moment and you're bringing a ton of pressure, communication can break down, and it looked like it happened there. So this should be a win for the Delaware defense. They stopped the drive shy of the end zone. And now Mercurio on for a field goal. He missed his only attempt in the first half on a low snap. Got the kick away, but missed it wide right. Kick it into a pretty stiff wind right now. But it's just a 27-yard attempt. Snap is good this time. And Mercurio got the upright. It's no good again. Again, one of those things, Delaware, you know, they're going to need the ball to bounce on their way, their way a couple times this game in this second half in order to probably squeak out a win here with their third QB in the game. And uh, looks like looks like that was the case here. Oh, that ball got up in the air, and you could see it fighting, <laughs> yeah. and maybe being pushed to the right as well. Yeah, it wasn't that it wasn't that long of a kick, but it looked like he really didn't drive it into the wind. And when it get up got up to the apex, that that wind really pushed it off to the right. So we're now on three missed field goals, a failed fake punt. We've had some other trick plays out there as well. Too many injuries for the Delaware liking for sure. Another crazy UD Villanova battle of the blue. Back to Yarns on the ground for nothing. Now, the flip side to what can Delaware do on its third quarterback, Villanova knows too that they can focus on Yarns and sell it even more to stop the run. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm feeling like on first down they are running Yarns a lot, and I think first down is one of those situations where is there a slot that you can just throw a nice quick hitch to, right? So try to take advantage of maybe a little bit of soft coverage on first down, or just try to find something easy on first down on the outside other than just handing it off to Marcus Yarns. And again, there's no Kyron Cumbie today, a late scratch for UD. Yarns again, puts his head down. He's to the 24 yard line. Third and medium coming up here for the Blue Hens. Another thing for Coach Cardi is the play caller to keep an eye on is now that you have your third quarterback in, Villanova, they pressure a little bit, but usually it's you know just the adding a fourth player since they add that three down lineman. If they start to really ramp up the pressure, you know, can he go into the screens and other things that can really attack when they're bringing zone pressure? Extra defensive back out there for Nova for third and six. They're not showing pressure. They only send three. Quick hitter for Harvin is broken up and intercepted. Tipped by Waxter. And caught by Jordan Nelson on the dive. Yeah, Ice Waxter, we talked about him at the beginning. These corners like to get up in pressure. And this is the kind of stuff that can happen. It's just an in-cut. And, you know, he's able to get his hand in there and, and tips and overthrows. The defense has to, has to make turnovers when those kind of things occur. And let's take a look just to make sure he didn't get there a little bit early. I thought maybe he might yeah. have live. Yep. 
And maybe the throw could have been a hair further in front of Harvin as well. But Wax threw a pick one off in the first half. Now gets the assist on this one to Nelson. His first of the season, a junior linebacker from Pennsylvania. And for a defense that doesn't take the ball away a lot, right. they've turned Diller over twice on fourth down and the two picks now. And the good field position that turns into this by Ayo Durjaye. He's out of bounds inside the 25, but we've got a marker to check. Yeah, it looked like there was a hold on Ethan Sanders, which allowed TD to get to the outside so easily. And this has been the one thing that has really held Villanova back so far as penalties. They had some penalty issues early last week against Towson. They got those things settled out, scored twice late in the first half, and cruised to a 23-point win against the Tigers. So we'll see if this UD defense, who probably had so much momentum coming out of that out of that last drive when they had the missed field goal, you know, probably a little bit of the air came out of them as they as we had that turnover. But now they're in a first and twenty, and if they're able to hold them here, I think that's two really great drives by the by the UD defense. Push back to the Blue Hen forty. They blitz. Watkins under duress just throws it out of play. Pringle was there, so certainly not grounding as Watkins survives all of that. Yeah, but that's that's Connor Watkins, you know, learning from the previous drive, right? There was another trap corner there. They brought presser, pressure off of that right edge. They had a trap corner where the corner's coming down to play the flat. That time, instead of trying to complete a pass, just throw it out over the flat's head and lift it for the next down. Feels like pressure has kind of picked up on both sides of the ball here, right? Yeah, and I would think for Delaware, I mean, they need to win this game right now with their defense, right? With their offense not at full strength. So they've got to try to force the issue with this unit out there. Second and 20. They're coming again. Watkins has time, and Pringle makes a nice reaching catch. Nick Ware drags him down almost back at the original line of scrimmage. Great hands catch by Pringle, and Coach Ferrante just talked about how much work he puts in, right? Whether it's stretching, film, being out on the field early, being out on the field late on the jugs machine. You can see it really paid off there. It almost surprised him, right, that that ball was so high and outside that he's able to snatch it. There are a lot of Wildcats who were first-year starters last year, right. and that experience is paying off here this year, like the quarterback and the wide receivers. Yeah. You just get another season under your belt, and you understand how, how quickly guys turn around. They understand, all right, there's pressure coming. I need to you know quicken my route a little bit. Again, here it looks like another set where UD might bring some pressure. Showing it straight ahead. They back off a bit. Watkins throwing, Pringle catching out of bounds with a first down. They convert a third and 12, and now they're in scoring position again. Yep, again, big, big players and big moments, right? And so you're thinking, you know, Pringle's been our guy all year. They're going to bring pressure, and they're going to leave him one-on-one, -on -one, and they do a great job of creating enough space for Pringle to get open. And then, again, Watkins just with a great throw. That's a tough throw, right, to the wide side of the field, out route. He puts it right on the money. Getting late third quarter, Villanova got down this end in their last possession, missed a field goal off the upright, their second missed field goal today. New set of downs, little dump off, inside the 10 goes Pringle, so he has not done his usual damage down the field, but he's picking up the damage here in the third quarter. Yeah, it's good. They're finding ways to get him the ball, right? Again, we talked about how Delaware does that from a play calling perspective. But we've seen Villanova with two backs in the backfield a lot there. And that time they motion Pringle into the backfield. They fake it to the running back and then run a little boot. Just get the ball in his hands, right? Get the ball into your playmaker's hands and let them do good things. Watkins, he's up to 15, 15 to 25. And, uh, you know, continue to just operate this offense efficiently. Here again, we see this set where you have two running backs to the left of the quarterback. It's a handoff. Ayo Durajaye's in, and the Villanova lead grows. Barley and Jackson get most of the yards on the ground. The aptly named TD Ayo Durajaye scores more touchdowns than them as he does here. Absolutely, and but you kind of you have these funky sets, right? And it makes the defense maybe second guess themselves. That second running back, who's actually a wide receiver, he goes out to the flat. He makes you know that defense second guess themselves. Now it looks like we have a little bit of chippiness down on the field, which has been the case in a lot of these Delaware games this season. The officials break that all up, and now they'll line up for the PAT. 
Stefan Voltaire, 75 for Villanova, was in the middle of all that. When you have a running back take it in from 10 yards out and not get touched, you have to mention the offensive line too, right? We talked about these guys. They've, again, they've played together consistently this year, and uh, they're able to open up some big holes for the running backs today. Mercurio, no issues on this one. It's the largest lead of the afternoon for either side. It's Villanova by two touchdowns. They miss a field goal, get the ball back, and go right back in a TD for TD in Newark. Villanova has won 15 of the last 17 meetings between these two schools and they just took a two touchdown lead here in Newark. It began with the pick and they turned the turnover into points. And remember they got backed up right so it was first and 20 and they're able to overcome that penalty by a few good completions here right. You don't get it all at once a few good completions get that first down and then look at the hole created here. Right, if, if UD wants to come out on top on this game, they're have, going to have to remain gap sound and not let that happen again, right? Walk into the end zone. Um, you know, great drive by, by Villanova, great response. Again, sudden change on their end where they have a turnover and then they're able to take it into the end zone. So that's something that coaches talk about a lot, that sudden change type situation. You get a turnover, now let's get some points off it. They get, did a good job of doing that there. There is a lot of football left to be played here and elsewhere. This is Jordan Towns on the kickoff return because JoJo Bermudez got hurt earlier in this quarter. Towns in safely out of bounds. But the way things are going here, and with Albany up 28-0 on Monmouth, and Richmond beating William and Mary, the way things are going right now, if these results hold, we would end up with a three-way tie atop the CAA between Nova, Albany, and Richmond that three-way tie would be determined by point differential. And if my math is correct, right now, Albany would win that by two points <laughs> over Nova. Wow. So now you wonder, does Coach Ferrante now have a, someone? So, you know, I, I, I know I, I know. <laughs> You're coaches, really stressed out about well, that. Well, <laughs> because I, I thought in particular that I bothered Ryan Carty <laughs> by asking what I thought was a good question, but then he made me think it, it might have been a dumb question. Right. But... I mean, if I'm in charge, I would need to know, and I don't know if I would. it would let me dictate play calling late in the game, but especially for these two schools, a win today might guarantee them a bye next weekend, and as few playoff games as you can play, the better, right? So it's important to get that. The receiver, Harvin, was open but wasn't looking for the football. It hits him in the back number eight and falls incomplete. That's one of those things. You have the third string quarterback in there, and, and yes, he's open, but that looked like a wide nine route to me, not a seam route. So he kind of throws it like a seam route, but meanwhile, Harvin's running a wide nine. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things. As you rep it with the third string guy, he might do things a little bit differently from the first two, and that's something that Ryan O'Connor probably never did in practice. Right. But, you know, Minicucci's seeing something different and getting the ball out of his hand quickly, which is a good thing for a young QB. Being down two touchdowns hard enough, doing that with quarterback number three. 
out of the backfield, it's Yarns, and he can't survive that. He had room to run if he kept his feet, but Christian Stapp went low, got him down. It's a three and out for Delaware. Yeah, again, good job not forcing the ball down the field, right? But you want to step into that throw and get it to Yarns quickly so he can try to make a move on that man in the flat. But tough three and out here for Delaware. I think when they punt it away and, and get it back, it's really the leadership on the defense that needs to stand up and try to get some of the momentum going, get a stop, and try to get the ball back to your offense to give, give your offense another chance at it. Ryan Cost punting end over end this time. Backing Pringle up, missed it at his own 10, and down he goes, surrounded by Blue Hens, but he avoids the ultimate danger there. Yeah, a little bit of a mistake there, but once you let the ball bounce, you just don't know what's going to happen. That time it took a high bounce. Sometimes it takes a quick bounce at you. Sometimes it bounces right or left. So at the end of the day, good job getting it and not getting the turnover and now giving the Villanova offense a chance to go. There are trucks, and then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving experience. And the world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Or get 0.9% APR on select 2023 Sierra models. Plus, get 2,500 purchase allowance when you trade in an eligible vehicle. It's there in his passion to teach and help his students create. And there in helping her students stay focused on a task and get it right. It's also in that moment when she accomplishes a goal she's been working on for weeks. Or in that nudge of encouragement that motivates her to learn. Student success in Delaware Public Schools is built on these individual stories happening every day. And it's driven by teachers and education support professionals working together to give every student the attention they need to be successful in life. Why choose Del One? One out of every 11 Delaware residents is a part of the Del One family. Rooted in Delaware, community driven, Del One strives to be an active part of Delaware neighborhoods and organizations. To this day, the Del One Foundation has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for countless local charities, and our commitment continues. Choose Del One and let's grow together. Back in Newark, it's a two touchdown lead for Villanova and they've got the football starting in a second from their own 10 yard line. Delaware just went three and out, so kind of a double blow. They don't get points, but they also put their defense right back out there, Pat. Yeah, absolutely. It's always tough to get the defense back out there, but I think they know that they're the ones who are gonna need to step up in this game and really create a lift, right? So um, Villanova has turned the ball over a fair amount. They've been negative in the turnover column and I'm sure UD talked about that this week. And now's the time where this defense needs to step up and try to get a turnover. If you're Villanova, you just want to keep doing what you've been doing, right? You want to stay balanced on offense. You want to keep the run on the pass in there. As Delaware runs someone on late. Yeah, Keyshawn Hunter was not out there like he was supposed to be, it appeared. Jalen Jackson, a couple of spin moves. The ball came out at the end. Jackson Taylor runs away with it. But for the moment, Jackson is being marked down. It was his second spin move that put the ball in danger. Again, great, great tough running by Jalen there. Let's see if he hangs on to the ball at the end of this run. But good tough run. You can see him running through an arm tackle. Roy on the field was the runner was down right prior here. to the ball coming loose. Second down. That ball stayed in his chest and was just ripped out once he was on the ground. I think that's a good call by the refs. Delaware needs to take the ball away. So that's the play to make for Taylor and everyone else. But that time just didn't work. It's second and four for Nova. Getting late third quarter. Watkins keeps it himself. I think the first time he's done this today, yeah. and the dive to the 24 moves the chains. Yeah, good job by Watkins, knowing where the stick is and not taking a big hit, right? So just get down and get that first down. Like you said, it's something that something that he does a lot of, and he really does a ton of it in the red zone, but he hasn't today. He saw the opportunity there with Ty Davis crashing down, gets the, gets the first down for Nova. He actually leads the team with eight rushing touchdowns. Right. And again, scored the winning points with his feet in this game a year ago in Philly, where Villanova rallied behind two blocked punts in the fourth quarter to steal a three-point win. 
Jackson back out there, explodes straight ahead, right down the middle to midfield. And again, it was the setup where they had the two backs on the same side of the quarterback. The one guy goes to the flat, and the other one comes and runs inside zone. And just good explosive play there, great blocking by the offensive line. You can see no one even lays a hand on him, and he's able to get up the field and, and finish the run as well. Then Tyron Herring appears to be the injured blue hen making that tackle on Jackson just shy of midfield. A two touchdown lead for Nova and they're driving again. And with Delaware down to its third string QB, any points, even just three, yep. feel like in the neighborhood of a haymaker, the knockout punch. Yeah, yeah, you think so. But this Delaware offense can score quickly, right? So as long as the playbook is still what it's been all season, Nick Manicucci is going to have an opportunity to push the ball down the field. Jackson having a nice afternoon, 55 yards on his first tote today, helping to get over 130. But as expected, D. Will Barley has contributed today. Ayo Durajaya has a touchdown. And Watkins making just enough plays in the air to keep this offense churning. Now they've left some points out there, turnovers, two missed field goals. But J Jalen Jackson's just been impressive today. I don't know any other way to put it. Averaging 14 yards a carry, and it's it's not just the numbers. It's how he's done it, right? He's done it up the middle. He's done it around the edge. He's finishing runs. He's just really, really impressive. And, uh, and you kind of hope that he gets rewarded with a touchdown yeah. at some point here. Um, but uh, really impressed by, by the run game in general. And, you know, Coach talked about this offensive line, but, you know, they're doing a great job creating holes as well. So he's on nine carries for 130. He had a game this year. We had 144 on eight carries against Lehigh. Watkins has time, there's the deep shot, it's Hayek running free into the end zone with another Nova touchdown. So there's the big play that we've been talking about right there. Delaware did not bring zero pressure, but they had three linebackers just sitting in the box not pressuring and no safeties. And so they ran, you know, without any pressure, without any deep safety look, they ran a little dig and go on the inside and, and it really fooled that inside safety. And he's got time to wait, plant his feet over the top of Say in the bucket of Hayek, and he survives the dive at the end to get in. And that's getting some folks on their feet to leave here. Still in the third quarter, the PAT makes it 28-7 Villanova. And Connor Watkins, we talked about how they're not taking more deep shots, but they're hitting more deep shots yeah. this year. And you can see it right there. You know, he knew exactly what he had. He had it blocked up, he could take his time, and he delivers a ball that's right on the money and enables Hayek to get into the end zone. I don't think there's a stat for this, but their efficiency on these plays is through the roof. Right. It's, they're not throwing it 100 times, hoping for two or three good ones. They do it six or seven and hit on four or five, and they usually end up in the end zone. Absolutely, it's the 50-50 it's the balls, people call them, but they're not really 50-50, right? They're taking shots when they, hey, we see something here, there, they saw, all right, they're not playing zero coverage, but they don't have any safeties deep. So really, you're just playing that one on air like you're in practice. If we can block it up, give ourselves some time, we can run a double move and get our guys wide open. And how about Hayek? His head coach was during the week. It's been a tough year for him. Hasn't been fully healthy. Numbers are down. Pat mentioned it preseason, all CAA coming into the year. But certainly Pringle, and even to some extent Jalen Sanchez, the young guy, have had better numbers than him and all he's doing here in his final regular season game is six catches for 121 and two touchdowns. Townsend on the run has nowhere to go. Yeah, Jaron Hayek, fifth year guy, like we said, has had a lot of success in previous years, but just banged up this year. And so to, you know, last game of the season to be able to, you know, put up some stats, I'm sure it feels really good for him. And Delaware down these three scores, returns to the field with their freshman from New Jersey quarterback, Nick Minicucci in. Ryan O'Connor started, got hurt, lower no, left, almost like left hip, without no real full diagnosis, at least publicly to us. And then a right leg issue for Zach Marker. That throw is behind Josh Youngblood, who turns asking for a flag. Yeah, I think that's one of the first throws that was really been off target. But, uh, again, you kind of see what Coach is trying to do. He's trying to give him RPOs, give him, give him something he can get a completion on, and just wasn't able to put it on target there. 
we also know how creative Ryan Cardi can be. But I yeah. wonder how many creative plays yeah. come off the board when your third string freshman's out there. Well, the positive thing is that you, he doesn't have to call the plays, right? So sometimes these trick plays, you have to like have an armband to be able to read off the entire play call, but they don't huddle, so that's a positive. But then there's also all the moving parts, right? The motions and making sure you kind of have a feel for when when things are going to come open um, in these you know more specialty plays that you aren't practicing from week one install. And so I, I think that's kind of where they're at now. They want to they run some of those week one install plays just to get him in a rhythm. And then once he gets in that rhythm, I think you'll see them open up the playbook a bit. But, you know, with down 21, with one minute left in the third, they're going to have to get there but because they need some explosives in order to put some points on the board. And down 21, late third, this four down territory. It might not matter on the yards run. That's a first down out to the 45-yard line. Yep. Good job by Coach Cardi not abandoning the run, right? You're not going to be able to score 21 points in, in one play. And so you got to mix in a little bit of that run as well. But, again, you want to kind of get your quarterback going because you know he's going to need to complete some balls in order to win the game. The 28 points, by the way, that Villanova has scored so far through three quarters, the most points that Delaware has given up since losing at Penn State back in week two. No, oh, excuse me, the Elon game. So it's the second most since early in the season. This is a defense that gives up under 20 a game. Here's a reverse. It's Youngblood. He's going to have blockers far sideline. He's got at least the first down out of bounds on the Nova side and then smack somebody in the face over there. And I think the Villanova sideline tackled the guy who got hit, who was going back at Youngblood. It's one of the things that we've seen from Delaware throughout the season. There's some of that just extracurricular activity. These guys have a lot of energy. They just have to contain it when they get in those type of situations. No matter what, it's the final play of the third quarter. The officials huddling. Here's Jeremy D'Angelo's announcement. The result of the play was a first down. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense, number five. 15-yard penalty. So the play it will counts. be a first down. It is that a is first the down. The third quarter. Delaware backs up 15. And Youngblood makes a really costly mistake. You can never do that, but you certainly can't do it here. His defense been trying, but Villanova's offense has been too good. They've got a three touchdown lead as we head to the fourth quarter in Newark. So here's what happened at the end of the third quarter, at the end of a good game by Josh Youngblood. He goes out of bounds here in just a second. He's going to come face-to-face -face with Adam Venino, 
on the Nova sideline. And there's a little bit of a shove right there. Just a gentle little tap. But then Youngblood pops Ethan Potter the face mask. And then the Nova player that I thought right there is just the kicker falling. <laughs> Has nothing to do with anything else. He's just a kicker being a kicker. Kicker being a kicker. It's all right. He got a little too excited. But Josh Youngblood excited in the wrong way. Far sideline. Just can't do that. Costing his team 15 yards. Pushing them back into their own territory, and now playing into the win, and it's Quincy Watson, who we saw for two or three plays only in the first half, getting that carry straight ahead for two. So again, same thing. Don't abandon the run. You still have to kind of make that a part of your offense. We actually did see that reverse, right? So it's great. There's a lot of moving parts there. You got a wide receiver who's actually coming inside of the running back on that play, and so it was well executed. So hopefully that gives Coach Cardi a little bit of confidence that he can call, you know, open up the playbook and call some of his special plays. Delaware came into this game without Kyron Cumby in their running back depth chart. They have since lost their top two quarterbacks, their starting right guard, and JoJo Bermudez out of their wide receiver rotation, running again with Watson for a short gain, and it'll be third and seven. And again, this, this is that point in the field where Coach Cardi does like to go for it on fourth down and obviously being down 21 points, you kind of think that that's the way he's calling this play, and especially, you know, run on first and second down, end up, end up in a third and seven. Probably have two plays to get this first down here. There was time to throw, didn't have a receiver, and they're going to lose yards. Back to the original line of scrimmage, and it's Waxter again. A pick, a deflection that led to a pick, and now that play, and it forces a punt. Yeah, we talked about how both of these corners are the best that they would probably see all year, and they've really come up big today. And again, you're third and seven, you're thinking, all right, maybe we go for it if we get a couple yards here. You end up in a fourth and ten, and you're probably going to punt. I'm a little surprised by this, though, needing three touchdowns in the final quarter. You're on the wrong side of the 50, but you just need the football here. Cost, punting, and getting this bounce inside the 15-yard line. Finally touched down there by a blue hen. Just less than 13 minutes left to go. Villanova has won 15 of the last 17 meetings between these two schools. They have a three touchdown lead right now. Another balanced attack from this big play offense, but it's not even Jalen Jackson is the number one guy of many good Wildcats today. Yeah, it really has been Jalen Jackson moving them down the field, and then they're having some success once they get into the red zone. We talked about how he has a long of 55, and he's averaging almost 15 yards a carry. Obviously, that comes with a couple explosives just like this, but again, hats off to the Villanova offensive line who's doing a great job creating some holes for Jalen to go do his thing. As you saw, he's off the field at the moment. Little screen pass here for Ayo Durajaye. Keno Arrington gets him out of bounds, far sideline. There was a late collision, and there goes the flag. The referee over there, the official, couldn't get the flag. I actually thought that was more accident than anything else with Jackson Taylor. Looks like there were two flags down on the play. Steve, there might have been a face mask even before that out of bounds hit. Steve Singleton is the head linesman. He made the call. We've also had some issues today with the chain gang not kind of clearing out of the way of trouble. We've had yeah. a couple of players go through and over the marker in the chain. Yeah, it looks like TD's okay, though. We have multiple fouls on the play. Personal foul, face mask, offense, number one. That'd be half the distance to the goal. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number zero. That'll be a 15-yard penalty, carries an automatic first down. So it's a face mask against Ayo Durjaye, and then the personal foul after the play. So both fouls are going to be enforced here. You can see the face mask there. Ah, he barely touched him, not going yeah, out of bounds. Yeah, and he tripped, over, he tripped over Arrington, I think, as well. Yeah, that's a tough call. And it matters because it kind of it undoes, to a certain extent, 
the face mask. Right, which would have put him in a first and 15 type right. situation. So. so we go back 15 and then forward 15, and it's like nothing happened. <laughs> it's first and 10 again. And the officials, there's so much for them to see, and the yeah. game is going so fast. But yeah. that's where you'd almost like the guy coming down the sideline to go in and help and go, right. I don't think that was as bad as you thought it was. Barley could not get out of that high grab. He's got a first down, but it would have been a lot more if he got all the way free. Yeah, great job by Arrington there again. Being able to make this tackle and, and kind of stay on top. Right, He gets a grab of the shoulder pad there and then gets back on him. And really, really good tackle there. Flirted with a horse collar, let go of that, right. and then spikes another human being. And if you've been following Delaware this year, you know that Kino is Lavar's son. He's made slow progress throughout this entire season because he's still a baby, basically, when it comes to football. Started his college career playing basketball. Yeah, I mean, first season with UD, right? And so he's still kind of you know trying to learn this defense. This is a different defense. They run this 3-2-6. There's safeties all over the place. But it's really his physicality, which we saw right there, that really sets him apart. Eight tackles a week ago in their win over Campbell. Here he is, number 10, technically a senior. I think lavar has been here a couple of times, right, to see him play in person? I saw him in the spring game. Saw him in the spring game. Second and 12 with 11 minutes to go here in regulation, and Delaware's defense needing to make a big play or two. He still looks like he could play. Yeah, I still would not <laughs> want to have a football run in his direction. No, no. Watkins escapes straight ahead. In a different game, he might have kept running, but right. he safely just tumbles down there, although I think he might have gets up grimacing a little bit. Not the uh, most athletic ditch on this run here. That's a business decision. It's a uh, score that's decision. Right. That's right. He saw what Arrington did on that last play, and he said, I'm getting down, which is a good play, right? Set yourself up for a good third down. Again, don't take an unnecessary hit. Yeah, because that's the other thing now for Delaware, not just the result of this game, but playing somebody somewhere probably next weekend now, yeah. barring a, a you know, miraculous comeback, is who's going to be healthy, especially on offense, for that game. That play is blown up in the backfield. It's Keyshawn Hunter with an offensive lineman on him that knocks over Ayo Durjaye. Yeah, great job by Keyshawn Hunter. 29 tackles this year. Scary injury earlier this year that he recovered pretty quickly from. You see great hands by Keyshawn Hunter there and then attacks that running back. Great job playing in the backfield. Speaking of next weekend, by the way, the kind of whispers around bracketology and whatnot that the loser of this game was probably going to end up hosting Lafayette, assuming they won today, and they are winning or have wrapped up their game. And they did beat Lehigh. So Lafayette is the Patriot League champion. And as I'm sure most of you know, for round one, the FCS tries the to get everybody a bus trip. They want to play within a 400-mile radius. So you can kind of shorten the pool of potential matchups using a quick map or two. So most people think, again, the loser of this game would host Lafayette next weekend. Lafayette has done their part, so to speak, wrapping up their Patriot League title, ending Holy Cross, denied the 5 P by Lafayette in the Patriot League this year. And now the hope for Villanova, if this final stays the way it is, this score, here's Jordan Townsend, a special teams play could help the UD cause as well. Villanova may be theoretically looking at a weekend off before their first playoff game, but they've still got nine minutes before the finish line here in Newark.
The upcoming Delaware football schedule is presented by Dart. Dart is keeping you moving forward. Delaware was hoping to have next weekend off if they won today, getting a first round bye, but they are currently down 28-7, so they are likely playing somebody on this field next Saturday. That's really the only silver lining to the way things have gone today, Pat, is that they always had the safety net of being in no matter what. This result pending just changes what the postseason actually looks like for Ryan Cardi's team. Yeah, absolutely. It, it changes everything, but I think more so losing your first two QBs changes everything. Right. And so now, now you're in this position where you have nine minutes left, 21-point deficit. You really want to kind of get your quarterback some reps and, and try to get him comfortable into this game so you can get some confidence going into that next week, right? So, you know, he's coming out. He's, he's has really played well so far and, and not had to do anything too amazing, but you just want to have him get some completion so he's feeling really good about going into a playoff game next week. A Marcus Yarns run, then that incompletion on the injury front with eight and a half to go, down three touchdowns. Do you need to not have Marcus Yarns and other guys on the field right now to protect them for next week, or are you still playing here to, to rally in this game? I think, you have, I think you have one more drive here, right? If you can get some points on the board here, again, we talk about how quickly they can score. You'd obviously love to score quickly, and if you can do that, you at least have a chance of getting back into this game. Uh, but I think at some point, Coach Cardi absolutely has to think about that, given how banged up these guys have been. Top two quarterbacks, Ryan O'Connor, Zach Marker, injured today, as well as their starting right guard, Bradley Onyewu, and wide receiver, kick returner, JoJo Bermudez. Another penalty being Personal discussed. Ball. Here we go, hands to the face. Defense, number 91. This one's against Villanova. Automatic. And the sarcastic cheers from those down below us. Delaware into Nova territory to the 34-yard line with a first down with eight and a half to go. And Pat's right, points here quickly at least makes Villanova sweat a little bit in this fourth quarter. That was Braden Bros in motion. He scored, caught Delaware's only touchdown. Down the middle they go, hoping for Harvin, but Villanova player is the closest. Yeah, right, so that's, that's a good game rep. That almost looked like two man, and you had Harvin going down the middle, and it looked like he was keeping his route high, and the quarterback threw him a little bit low. And so that's one of those things that you'll be able to kind of progress on next week and understand, hey, why'd the wide receiver do that, or why'd the quarterback think that he was going to go where he went? It almost feels like halftime came at the wrong time for Delaware. They had scored points. Yeah. They got the ball back, but they had to be careful in their own end with time running down. Minakuchi throwing. Youngblood had it. It's not free. It's called incomplete. It almost feels like if they had a second drive under normal circumstances, right, they could have kept the momentum, momentum going, but they had to stop and then leave the field for, by the way, 25 minutes longer right. than usual today and then come out with a you know, cold, whatever, and mm -hmm. never really got going again on this side of the football. Yeah, absolutely. And then you have that turnover early, right? right. And so that's, that's one of those situations. Again, you have the young quarterback playing. He put a ball, I mean, maybe it was back shoulder, but he put a ball in his wide receiver and it ends up getting intercepted. And is that kind of in the back of his mind then for the rest of that third quarter? He got that one away, but that could not be caught. I think that was Jorns, and it was far sideline. Great job by Minakuchi, just trying to keep the play alive and was able to spit that out at the very last second. I think he even surprised Marcus Yarns, who wasn't expecting to get that ball right there. Great job. Look at that. Getting, yeah, yeah, looked like he just surprised Marcus Yarns with it. Good job getting out of the pocket, right? Give yourself some time. Survey down the field. And then don't take a sack, right, at the end of the play there. Good job getting out of his hands. Again, I think he'll learn, hey, just throw it away a little bit earlier as opposed to making that tough play. It's fourth and ten. Ryan Cardi was going to call a timeout, but then they reset the play clock. So now there's time, theoretically, with ten on the play clock now. On fourth down... Maybe Delaware's last gasp. There's some room out here for Minakuchi. He's got to keep going, fighting, reaching. It's a first down. 
and then another flag comes in. That looked like a late hit from a Delaware offensive lineman trailing the play, some pushing and shoving after that. I didn't catch who that penalty was on, but Nick Minacucci did a great job getting up the field, not just running to the sideline. He knows it's fourth down. He knows he needs to get to the sticks, and he knows he's going to need to get a hit, right? So does a good job diving ahead and, and getting the first down for Delaware. If this is against Delaware, it'll be after the whistle. So the run and the first down would stand. Then they move backwards. The result of the play was a first down. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, number 71. 15 yard penalty. It will be first and 10. That is number 71's Patrick first and 14. Patrick Shuck, the left the guard, game. is getting this call. It's just not who Delaware is. They're, they're number, I think they're first in the CAA in top five in FCS in fewest penalties per game. And so you're kind of seeing a, a bunch of these big penalties, and it's, it just hurts Delaware. It's not how they win football games this season. It actually wasn't Shuck. He was there, but a second player came in and knocked over a Wildcat. Either way, the flag warranted. You see the penalties here, seven penalties for 104 yards. Villanova has six, but it's only 60 yards, right? So you can see the impact of some of these big penalties. And you're not wrong. Both of these schools don't commit penalties. Right. They're well under 50 yards per game in penalties. And they're both past that, and that's intercepted. And Danny Abraham is off to the races. Yarns won't get him. If it wasn't over already, it is now on the pick six. So we saw Connor Watkins do that before, right, and almost make a miracle play thrown back across his body. And I said that's one of those that quarterback coaches talk about. You know, you don't want to don't want to be making those kind of plays. And that's exactly why, right? You just it's really tough to be able to get the angle right and to understand, you know, where the defenders are coming from to be able to make a play on the ball. And right there, it obviously turned into a pick six. See again, a little pressure. Does a good job rolling out, and then you want to you want to throw the ball to the right. He didn't have a ton of options, but it's not the end of the world if you just throw it out of bounds. Instead, he tries to make that miracle throw across his body, turns into a pick six. Abraham helped the cause a year ago when these two schools met, recovering one of the block punts late in the game that helped steal that one for Villanova. Now the pick six for the ultimate exclamation point. A 35-7 Nova lead. These games historically have been close. This one is not. The Wildcats rolling in Newark. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Your Buick parks itself. That's so you. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kinda got a six cents. And a head of display. They're here. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Get 1.9% APR. Plus, current eligible non-GM owners get up to $12.50 purchase allowance on 2023 Buick SUV models. Plus, no monthly payments until 2024. When it comes to the health of you and your family, you want to trust in having the best partner for your well-being. Ranked among the top 50 in the country, that's exactly what you'll find at Christianicare. Because you deserve excellence from your physician, specialists, nurses, and staff with safe and convenient ways to get the care you need. And at Christiana Care, we add in something special, love. It's at the heart of everything we do, and we do it all for the love of health. Your health. Another happy sideline for Villanova. The Wildcats have reeled off five consecutive wins this season. They've won 14 of the last 16 meetings between these two schools. They were up 28-7, and then Danny Abraham does this, the pick six, for one last flourish. 
a 28 point lead. They're gonna cruise into the postseason feeling good about themselves. On the other side, Pat, for UD, do the playoffs make it easy to forget this and move on, or is a loss like this actually have a hangover into the playoffs? I think it's kind of easy to forget this one, right? I don't think the coaches are going to come in and say, don't even watch the film, we're just on to the next team. But, um, you know, I think there there is really this new season aspect to the playoffs, and the regular season is really about getting into the postseason. And assuming everything goes how we think it's going to, we know that, that Delaware is going to be playing next week in the postseason. And so... It's almost, hey, we have to learn from this one, but after we watch the film, we got to put it away and just go play like we've played the, re the rest of the season in order to try to win some games in the playoffs. Yeah, the hangover for UD is the guys who have been injured in this game. Jordan Townsend still playing hard on the kickoff return out to the 45-yard line. So with this game now seemingly decided and Albany cruising as well against Monmouth, the only drama in this four-way tie atop the CAA coming into today, the final Saturday of the regular season, is the Richmond, William & Mary game, with Richmond needing to win to create a three-way tie. They're up a touchdown with 81 seconds to go, but William & Mary has the football, trying to drive for the tying points. Now, in the scenario of a three-way tie between Villanova and Albany and Richmond, will have tri-champs. They'll all technically be CAA champions. The tiebreakers decide the automatic bid into the postseason. And if that threesome, again, is tied, Albany, Richmond, Villanova, we go to point differential. The good news for Nova is that the point differential, you can only earn 21 points per game. It's like, I guess, a sportsmanship kind of angle, so you don't run up scores. So the fact that Albany is up 41-0 on Monmouth, it's only a 21-point win for them. It's only a 21-point win for Nova, which means nothing changes differential, and Villanova wins that tiebreaker, and therefore is the automatic qualifier out of the CAA. I think I need a nap. That was a lot. I think I explained that well. I mean, thankfully, let's get a huge <laughs> shout-out to Rob Washburn in the yeah. CAA office yeah. because I know that there are leagues that don't do this. Monday morning, there was a re maybe even Sunday, there was a release. of It was a full page laying out the six different tiebreakers, how they would be decided. Minakuchi on the run inside the 40. And I even bothered Rob with a couple of questions during the week to make sure I was reading things correctly, understood everything correctly. So I hope that I just did Rob and his staff's work justice by describing that correctly. So there, it's done at Albany. They win. So congrats to them on being CAA co-champs. Richmond trying to hold on. And Villanova appears ready to win here this afternoon. And there you go. You get Nick Minacucci involved in the run game. He gets the first down. You give him a nice, easy throw to the flat. Again, you're trying to build up some confidence here so he can take that on to the next game if he needs it. Joe Nathan, silver sophomore running back, made that catch. Clock is running. Five minutes left in regulation. Minacucci over the middle. And almost pulled out of the air with one hand there. It would have been a tough catch and a good catch from James Collins, but couldn't pull it down. And this is even good time for all the other guys who are getting some reps here at the end of the game, right? Yeah. Get in. You know, they probably haven't played a lot so far this season. Definitely not in the battle of the blue type atmosphere. So get these other guys some reps and, and see what they can do. Because as unfortunately Delaware has learned today, you never know how banged up you're going to get, and you may need to play important reps at some point. Phil Lutz blocking from Minacucci. He's out of bounds near the 30. And that's a first down again for UD. Yeah, doing a good job. I think he knew where the sticks were there and just had to get out of bounds past him. A little hesitation as Phil Lutz was over there on the edge doing the box out block as best as he could. But... Nick Minacucci doing a good job getting out of bounds and not taking another hit. Collins makes this catch. 
and fights his way near the 25 yard line. Minicucci certainly has seemed ready, right? Yeah. Maybe the results haven't been there, but he hasn't looked overwhelmed or scared of the moment. He's been out there trying hard, competing, but it makes sense as a freshman playing unexpectedly that there are not more points on the board. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is an offense that, that does a ton with putting points on the board as well as having explosive plays, but give credit to the Villanova defense, right? Those guys are on scholarship too, and they did an unbelievable job today slowing down whoever was on the field, right? Even when the starters starting the number one and number two QBs were out there, they really did a good job taking away the explosives um, and, and turning the ball over when they had to, right? They got stout when they really needed to. And uh, I think, you know, we use the term bend but don't break, and that's really what they did, and they were able to get turnovers on down early on. I think that's a good point. It's only seven points, not a lot of production from a good offense, but – we played more than a quarter with Delaware basically at full strength, and they could not get their offense going against this Nova defense. Yeah, yeah, and it's, a, it's one of those things where Delaware has had a lot of success early on in games and, and started fast, and they weren't able to do so today. But, um, but I, I think, again, there's a lot to learn from in this game. Mark Ferrante in the vest and the white sleeves in celebration mode, far sideline, about to go to 6-1 and one as the head coach in this head-to-head. -head. He's in year seven. This will be his 46th win with the program. They did not make the postseason a year ago. They're going back this year, and they're going back as the champs, the co-champs, and the automatic qualifiers out of the CAA. Again, one of those things, trying to get a feel for it, right? It's fourth down. You get three yards. That should be an easy pitch and catch, but, you know, young wide receiver, young quarterback, just not on the same page. And it's not on your screen right now, but Minicucci stood there head down after the incompletion, and the defense ran to him mm -hmm. and picked up his head, patted him on the shoulders, and sent him off the field. And it's guys like Dylan Trainers going back out there, one of their leading defensive players, also a leader, that went and picked up the young quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're a young quarterback. You want to get in. You want to score a lot of points. He experienced that success, you know, by throwing a touchdown earlier today. And then, uh, you know, you're not able to follow it up with more success. And so, you know, he's frustrated. But, again, it, it's tough to say. But you get a lot of film out there. And you can learn so much from those first couple of games that you play. And it really gives you the opportunity to grow as a quarterback as well between that kind of first game and second game uh, against really good competition like Villanova. D. Will Barley still running for Villanova, moving the chains again. They have switched out Connor Watkins, though, at quarterback. Tanner Maddox, a sophomore from Reading, PA, is now in. He was watching Tanner during warm-ups. It looked like he can, he can throw it around. So, yeah. he, he, you know, he's 6-for-6 six six on the year for 40 yards, so you can't really tell a lot from that sample size. But, you know, it looks like he really has the arm to be a good quarterback here for Villanova. And, and they threw you off, too, pregame, because <laughs> we didn't see Watkins throwing with yeah. the lead wide receivers. That's All of us right. were looking around going, why is he throwing with a couple of random guys? One of them was his other quarterback. Yep but a little different pattern for Villanova. Yeah, every, everyone comes out and does a little bit different setup before the game, and typically the starting quarterback comes out with a select group of the wide receivers or tight ends and, you know, throws it around a little bit. But, the, you know, the, all the backup quarterbacks for Villanova were thrown to the starters, uh, the starting wide receivers, and I was thinking to myself, you know, is, is Connor Watkins going to play today? But then when they did finish up, Connor Watkins started throwing, and guess who was out there running routes for him? It was, it was Tanner Mitt Maddox, so... Um, you know, that kind of tells you a lot about the type of guy that he is, you know, that he's out there pregame, talking talking with the starter, running routes for him, getting him prepped and ready to go. D. Will Barley, you saw him come off the field, congratulated by his head coach, Mark Ferrante. He and Jackson doing their normal damage on the ground. Jalen Jackson, 90 carries, 130 yards. You know, these guys work so hard. That was Jabril Mace in with the carry for Villanova. With this one winding down, it is time to pick today's player of the game. It's brought to you by Delaware Orthopedic Specialists, where specialty cares matter. Jaron Hayek, a quiet season by his standards, but a big game to close out the regular season. Six grabs, over 100 yards, two touchdowns, helping his team pull away and get this win, another win head-to-head -head for Villanova over Delaware. Yeah, and you feel great for Jaron Hayek, right? A guy who was the preseason All-CAA and just has been hurt most of the season and hasn't had a ton of production to come out 
you know, in a game that really matters and to put up the kind of numbers and have the kind of impact that he's had, you know, that just means a lot to him. And that should be the final play this afternoon here in Newark. Villanova continues to own the Battle of the Blue. They played it 17 times with the title. They've won 15 of those 17 and a Gatorade bath for their head coach because they're the CAA coach champs. They get the league's automatic bid into the postseason as they win another head-to-head -head showdown with the Delaware Blue Hens. And they really do it in style, showing off the full package, right? They ran yep. it, they threw it, the the and game. for a change on defense, it's a stingy unit. The one thing they don't do extremely well is take the ball away, but two key interceptions in this one as they went up against three different Delaware quarterbacks because of injuries and let none of the three ever really get going and make a huge impression on this game. Yeah, really, really great job on defense. Just the scheme was there, right? They, they stopped Yarns for the most part. It contained him, I should say. And, um, you know, that kind of leads to, uh, you know, having to throw the ball down the field. And, and when you have three quarterbacks playing in the game, it makes it tough to, uh, you know, get any continuity. So congrats to Villanova on the win today. The rivalry trophy, the CAA trophy, both of these schools, though, head off into the postseason. They'll find out their futures with the selection show tomorrow. It's a big Villanova win once again in Newark on the ground, through the air, and with defense. Today's game was produced and directed by Frank Lasquadro. For our entire crew, my partner Pat Devlin, I'm Andrew Bogish. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Saying so long for now from Newark.